Hello and welcome to this live stream directly from Tracon 2018 here in Tampere in Finland. I have my eight victims with uh, players with me who will be running through a module that we wrote specifically for the convention. The theme was horror. And so that means Cthulhu was on the cards. Now my eight players here uh, say hello everybody. Hello. hello. They are not being coerced, forced, or otherwise required to attend. They have all voluntarily submitted to playing in my game. So uh, without any uh, more discussion, they have character sheets in front of them. They have not seen these sheets before. You may now turn over the big page of the uh, character sheet. That is your character. You have a name, and we're using a basic Cthulhu system, if you are familiar with Cthulhu. It's a D10 system. You roll 2D10, get a percentile value. You're going to get underneath your skill, and you have a list of skills. You've got a name, and that's pretty much all that you need to go on. Now, to make things a little bit more complicated for my players, they are also issued with one of these, which is a little slip that gives them a little bit more mystery than perhaps they might be used to. You may now turn over your little slips. Do not reveal it to the player sitting next to you. Keep it secret. That's what we want. Look at it, understand it, unpack it, make it part of your personality for your character, and let's see what comes out of that. You can or cannot enact that. It's entirely, entirely up to you. How you figure that out is entirely up to you as well. I'll give you some moments to think about that. Everyone understand the idea behind it? Okay, fantastic, excellent, good. Right, so let us start our journey. I'm just unpacking my condice here. All right. Now, excellent. Starting with you, give us your character name and give us a little bit of a description. Oh yes, uh, we have a speaking stick because it's such a large group. In order to manage who goes when, we have a speaking stick. So take us Hello? through it. I'm here. Yes. So my character is um, Elwan Sherman. Uh, she's an entertainer, most likely from Russia, maybe a little bit. And uh, she's kind of a haunty look for an entertainer. But she's an entertainer, so it, it works. Most like what she entertains is like a dancing and that kind of stuff. Mm, looks brown hair, brown eyes, girly, so on and so on. Lovely. Uh, her name again? Uh, Elva Sherman. Elva, all right. Sherman. Yes. Thank you, Elva. Right, next. My character is Derek Peterson. He's a bit skeptical farm o owner and never shots about it. <laughs> um, he owns a small farm out in the west and he's normal farmer, a farmer kind, little dirty. <laughs> Lovely. Next. <coughs> My character's name is uh, Daniel Zimmerman. Uh, he has... Um, he he walks as if he has um, iron spine and wears a very um, nice suit. He's kind of shortish and um, uses platform shoes to make up for that. And he also has a suitcase with him with uh, some stickers from uh, Paris and uh, Egypt and um, Turkey. Lovely. All right, next. Um, my character name is Della Flowers. Um, she's a professor and quite progressive. Uh, quite cheery person and prone to tell two long stories and it, a fidgety and anxious at times. Fidgety and anxious. I love it. Right. My character is Daniel Houston and I'm a police detective. I'm short and stout, and uh, I smoke cigarettes all the time. <laughs> okay, chain smoker. Uh, my character is Edith Gordon, and uh, she's a bit short, and she's also left-handed. Uh, her hair is dirty blonde, 
and uh, she has two cats at home and doesn't really get along with her family. Um, my character is Elmer Green. Uh, he's a professor. He's kind of young for a professor or for a professorship because he's aged 31. Uh, he's eloquent and narrow-minded. Uh, he likes to use brown uh, suits and generally he's somewhat wiry and uh, likes to keep a distance to people uh, and he also uses few words and is somewhat old-fashioned. Okay, I'm playing Josie Cross. And Josie is a teenage girl. She's, you know, a little bit over dramatic, but no, not that over. Okay, don't look at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, she is currently unemployed. She, she has her ways of getting cash, but so probably she'll find something better. So yeah, I don't know. Anyone bubble gum? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So now you have met the cast of characters that are going to play out in this tragedy as uh, things start to unfold. I want you to cast your minds back now to 1899, that wonderful year when uh, steam trains were all the trade and uh, where the uh, Victorians were running around England and of course the cowboys were running across the Midwest of America. And uh, our story begins out in Kentucky, that uh, wonderful space out in the uh, plains. And it's winter, so snow is all around and that wonderful cold, crisp air. And uh, you are all aboard the train, a train that has left New York and is racing along its way as far as it can go all the way to the uh, west coast of the USA as you are for one reason or another aboard this train. Hopefully you all know the reason why you're on this train, uh, but you are on the train nonetheless. The train has got that wonderful wooden interior and you can smell the leather of the seats. There is a bit of stale tobacco in the air as uh, cigarette laws haven't yet even come into to being. And all of you are in the, uh, the passenger car, the lounge car, where it is just you on the train, and then the unfortunate noise of um, several children. There are several young schoolboys that are on a field trip. Their school teacher, a lady by the name of Hildegard Kraftenmeer, is uh, with them and she's completely and utterly ineffectual. She sort of sits there quietly saying, no boys, please, you must be very quiet. Please calm down, please, please be very quiet. I apologize to all the Germans out there for my terrible accent. Uh, please be very, very quiet. And the boys are just going mad. They're just looking outside the windows and they're running across from one side to the other and they're climbing over chairs and things and they're just everywhere and anywhere. The train has been going now for two days as you continue on your journey with this chaos all around you. You all have private uh, compartments uh, in the sleeping car, which is one car ahead, and one car behind you, of course, is the dining car where you will have your usual meals. And then at the very back of that is the cargo and luggage uh, wagon where uh, all of your effects and things have been stowed. Now, for the journey that you are on, that is locked to the general public. You cannot access that. You would have to ask the conductor, a rather boring man whose name is Ralph Follett, you would have to ask him for special permission to access that luggage compartment, and you wouldn't be allowed to go in alone. You would have to go in with conductor Follett to make sure that uh, there are no shenanigans. The train suddenly gets a loud bang, and then it rocks slightly, and then there's another bang, and then there's another bang, and then there's another, and the train suddenly screeches to a halt with this bang, 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 bang happening from either side of it. What are you doing? You've got the speaking stick. We're starting with you. Josie. I'm looking for Ralph. Right, okay. There is no sign of Ralph at the moment. He went off bustling to go and do something in the dining car. Uh, hey, any of you elder people? Is this like this? Bang! 
Shit. <laughs> what happened here? What are you doing? So you're just calling that out. You're asking yes, that out. Okay. Just com complaining about everything. Is, and this stupid boy team. <laughs> Absolutely. The kids are all screaming and shrieking and the teacher is going, no, calm down. I'm sure this is normal. Okay. Bang, bang, if bang, there is bang. A corner, I... I tend to sit in the corner. All right, so you rush over to the corner. Okay, hand the speaking stick over to Elmer. What are you doing? Uh, yes, uh, this is most, most uncommon. Um, Bang! Oh my God, it happened again. What's happening? What should I do? There um, are windows on either side of the uh, carriage. Uh, I move further away from the windows, just in case something <laughs> is outside. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know what, what it could be, but I'm just all nervous and twitchy, and I'm just waiting. Okay, that's what you're doing. Bang, 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 bang. The train is rocking quite badly from side to side. I look up from my book and uh, check uh, all the surrounding people, what they are doing. No! <laughs> Panic, screaming, they're running around. One's hiding in the corner, the other one's taking his book and has just moved away from the window. I notice that the what causes the noise isn't in the room. And no, it's definitely coming from outside. And I try to look outside the window if right. I can Right, give see me a anything. sanity check as you look outside the window. So roll oh. 2d10 and get underneath your current sanity value. Uh, two. And... Under definitely underneath your current yeah. sanity value. As you look outside, you can see that there is this massive herd of bison and they are charging into the side of the train. And you can see that they slam their heads into the side of the train, into the metal wheels, cut their heads open, they sort of stagger up, they get up, they take a few steps back and then they just charge back into the side of the train. There must be at least a thousand of them on either side just running and slamming into the train. And uh, several of them, you can see, have cut themselves so badly that they have actually collapsed and are now being trampled by the others that are just charging into the side of the train. That's what you see. Next, uh, Mr. Daniel Houston. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I do the same and I go look out the window with Sand my... Sand check? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 48 under. All right, you're good. And uh, when I notice this bison, I uh, start running toward the. Uh, what's the. You've got the dining car behind you, uh, and you've got the, forward, the forward. sleeping car in front of you. Yes. Yeah, can, I, can I get all the way to the. Um, the engine? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, you can. Yeah. I well, that's where you're going to try and get to. Yeah, right? I try to get there. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Okay, uh, is it Della? Yes, mm -hmm. Della Flowers. Uh, are they bison hitting the just asking going the to the Della is going to the window as well? All right, give me a sanity check. The moment you look out the window, you see these crazed bison. Uh oh, oh, above, <laughs> above. All right, <coughs> you lose four sanity as you watch as one of the bison, as it slams into the large metal wheel of the train. It shears off some skin from its skull and then another bison runs up and grabs that flesh in its mouth and just continues to rip the flesh off of the head of this other bison. And then more bison pile around it and start chewing on it, ripping it to shreds. Oh. Uh, oh, indeed. <clears throat> um, are, the, are the bisons uh, hitting the train from all sides? Or both from sides, the yes. They're slamming in from both sides. So the carriage is just rocking from side yeah, to like, side. Uh, the behind of the, or the front of the train? Uh, from here, so you sort of look out the window cautiously towards the, the uh, steam engine itself, and you can see that it looks like they are, they are in all directions, just charging at this train, okay. trying to... It, you get the impression that they're not trying to destroy the train, they're trying to kill themselves. Great. Um, 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 well, I just look back inside, wide-eyed, and trying to make sense of it all, and then I scream all quiet. I can't even think. <laughs> all right, you're screaming. Okay, Daniel. Well, the children are driving me mad, so I scream, uh, yell, <laughs> shut up, 
and get down. Wow. Uh, the kids all look at you. <laughs> they all start screaming even more now that they're terrified of you. The teacher says, oh, please don't speak to my children like that. That is not an appropriate tone. Whilst this chaos is going on around you. Well, get them away from me then. She turns around. Please, boys, please, will you move away from this crazy person? Please move <laughs> away. The boys don't care. They're just going completely ballistic. And she's like, I did try. <laughs> well, then um, I look out the window. Sanity check. I failed. Failed. Four sanity gone. You've gone, you've viewed this. What you now see is that the bison, they're still charging into the train, but they're now starting to climb over the corpses of the ones that have already died. And so now instead of them being below the uh, carriage line, they're now starting to bash into the side of the carriage. And you can see that the wooden paneling is now starting to buckle as their horns are now starting to slam against, well, the, the bosses are starting to slam against the actual carriage itself, no longer just the undercarriage of the train. Uh, which of the cars are the, are the most sturdy? That would probably be the luggage car right at the back because that's just big solid wooden planking. It doesn't have windows in it. It doesn't have anything like that in it. Either that or the actual steam engine itself, which is at the front of the train. And then I say, we need to get to the front, to the steam engine. All right. You start moving towards the steam engine. Okay, Derek? Well, I look outside of the window. <laughs> Sanity check. 27. You're fine. Yeah. You, you absolutely have no problems with bison eating each other. Then, then I'm like, back in my farm, animals won't do this. <laughs> this is quite peculiar. <laughs> like, are animals all like this? Back in my farm, they behave so much better. Bang, bang. <laughs> and then I start thinking about it. This, this is getting quite dangerous. So I start to head um, to the conductor also. All right. So there's a couple of you heading forward. And then finally, Elva. Yes. Uh, Elva will not look at that window because she's scared. She will just go fast as she can <laughs> to the train. Towards the conductor. Yes. Absolutely. All right. So... Uh, you're all, you, you're going to have to remind me when I come back to you as to what you're doing, just because there's so many of you, I can't keep it in my head. Um, so you start to, to move around, hide, move to various corners and things. As you are, uh, I think you were going to the front first. Yep. As you reach for the door, uh, Follett bursts in and he goes, Oh my God, y'all, you know what's going on outside? Bang, bang. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously you know what's going on outside. Right, 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 right. I need all the men to come with me. Women, don't worry. You're safe. You're fine. The men have got it all under control. Just relax yourselves down and be pretty. Men, you need to come with me. We've got to shoot ourselves some cannibalistic bison. Do we have enough weapons for that? There are some rifles in the front of the train which we'll be using to disperse these... these I don't know what the hell they are. We've got to get the train moving again because there's a risk they're going to topple the train over. Gentlemen, well lit the way. All right. So, uh, who are ladies? Uh, we've got Josie, who's a lady. We've got Elma. Elma, are you responding to the call to rise? Uh, no, I'm sitting down. I just had my sorry. No, I'm just sitting down. I'm just uh, looking at other people, at their reactions, what they are going to do. I try to avoid conflict. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, unnoticed by anyone. All right. Uh, would you please give me a uh, spot check? I think it's called a spot check, or is it a search check? Spot hidden, yeah. uh, spot hidden check. So you've got to roll under your spot hidden. Fail. Fail. All right. You're sitting there. You did move away from the window. This banging continues to, to, to happen. All right, so you don't seem to see anything happening. All right, uh, Derek, are you going with the conductor? Uh, yes. All the way over there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If that stretch, we should have been there. Um, yes, I'm, I'm going to. All right, Derek, Daniel? Yes, I'm going because I was already going. Daniel, you're obviously going, all right. Uh, and Elmer, you're just going to sort of sit back and, and not 
not sort of participate. Okay, fantastic. All right, so the four of you run with the uh, train conductor. As you're running through the sleeping car, you realize that this car, obviously the bison have got up higher, and there's whole sections that have been ripped open with bison now slamming their heads through the wooden paneling. Um, so it's rather a difficult journey for you to, to move through. So I'm going to need you to please give me a dexterity check. Now your dexterity value is just listed as a single number. Times it by five and then roll underneath that. This is just the men who were running. So, um, dexterity times, by times five. five. Yeah, okay. <laughs> success? 39, so yeah. Success, yes. success, Buffalo. success. All right, fantastic. All right, so you all sort of leap around these buffalo that are just slamming their way through. Uh, all three of you give me spot hidden checks, please. Everybody else at the back who has stayed behind, I need all of you to give me a spot hidden, except for you, Elma, who is desperately not trying to see what's going on. All right. I'm just going to work my way down the table, starting from all the way down there, uh, with Elva. Spot hidden, it's a skill. Yep. Just hand the mic. Sorry. Yes, it's a success. Success uh, under, okay. Um, success. Yeah, you succeeded. Uh, yes, success. Actually, it's going to be easier to do it this way, because it's either a success or failure. Who succeeded here? Raise your hand. You did, didn't? You didn't? No. You did. All right. And you succeeded or failed? I <laughs> failed. Failed. All right. Miserably. So the men who succeeded, the bison, their eyes, normally their eyes are very dark brown anyway, their eyes are completely red and their mouths are just frothing with this pink blood. Those who are in the uh, carriage, in the lounging carriage, in the seating carriage, one of them slams its head right through the wall and its, its head bursts into the carriage. Uh, those of you who succeeded who are still in that carriage, you see, again, red, red, red eyes, this frothing um, blood at the mouth. And um, it, it, for a moment, it looks at you. All of those who succeeded, give me a sanity check. And just go yes for fail or yes for pass, 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 fail, fail. All right, those of you who failed, you lose one point of sanity each because apparently this is not that shocking. But you are convinced that you hear it's 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 a whisper, and it could have come from one of the kids, or it could have come from Follett, who is trying to move his way around these bison. But you hear the sound of Kali. Just on the wit, it's like, what? And then you don't hear it again. So that's what you're hearing. Those of you who failed, of course, you don't hear anything. Just the splintering and the sound of the bison outside um, ripping each other apart and screaming and shouting. All right, men, you run forward. Follett opens up a locker at the front of the sleeping car um, and pulls out four rifles, one for himself and then one for each of you. And he says, all right, we'll, we'll just shoot them. Just shoot them and hopefully that'll disperse them. As soon as the, the path is clear, the train is going. So you've got to come with me to the front of the train. We're just going to shoot our way straight through this, all right? Anyone in the seating car doing anything? All right, microphone over there. We'll start that way and I'll, we'll work our way around. Uh, I start uh, rushing to the direction of luggage cart. You're rushing in the direction of the luggage cart. All right, Elmer, what do you do? Like uh, that's where you're, you're, that's where you're safe going. Safe place. Yeah. Safe place. All right, Elmer? Uh, first of all, I recognize uh, reference to Mahakali. Uh, because uh, I've studied Hindi for some time and uh, Indian culture uh, and it just in general that, 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 that has been a curiosity of mine. Uh, then I notice uh, this person rushing to the back of the train so because the bison's head is right next to me I'm still not looking at it but <laughs> I know that something is there I stand up and I quietly follow him. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I see the other passengers going to the back, and I decide to follow them. And um, are the kids? Uh, the there. kids are just running rampant everywhere. Some of them are trying to touch the bison's head. <laughs> they kind of, they're sort of doing the the the. Go on, you you can touch it. Like, you know, How about the teacher? No, boys, please don't try and touch the giant cow. No, please stay away from the cow. And the boys don't give a damn, of course. They're just look, they're sort of trying to touch it. And one of them's got a pen knife and he's trying to stab it. But they're not, they're not very good at it. Uh, I suggest the teacher to move the kids uh, into another car where there's not the bison. Oh, that's a very good idea. Yes, I will absolutely try and do that. Very good idea. Um, thank you, la- young young lady. <laughs> um, and she says, boys, we must move into another car. Yeah, that's all that happens, because they don't listen to her. All right, next. Well, I guess we got the rifles, and we start shooting some bison. Absolutely. Give me an attack. Nope. <laughs> You shoot out into the mass of bison, expecting it to be easy to hit at least one of them. The bullet disappears into the brown masses, and you're not sure if you actually hit or what. But the bison on that first shot, there's a, a moment where the entire herd suddenly stops. And then they all look at you. <laughs> Over to you. What are you doing in the carriage? Uh, do I hear the gunshot? Yes, you hear this loud bang! Um, I'm going to the front and ask for another rifle. Right, so you start making your way through the, the, the cart. Mm-hmm. Um, Follett, who is still standing, looks one rifle. He hasn't gone to the front with the men. He's... He, he, Y'all will handle it, I'm sure. I, I don't need to put myself in danger. Um, so he's standing there. He looks right. over. He, Ma'am, I told you to stay in the lounge car. This is not a place for women. Let me show you, young man, how it's done. Well, fine. You take my rifle and I'll have to stay here then. <laughs> and then I take a shot. All right. So you sort of lean out the, the doorway and you fire. Give us a and shot. And this is a rifle. Yes. Well, Off the table. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who got the dice? Who's got the dice? It's gone. Oh, there we go. Right there. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Uh, it's got to be on the table. On the table. On the table. Ni- <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. So you re- raise the rifle and you pull the trigger and you realize you haven't loaded it yet. Well, I'm sure Oops. glad you're showing me how to use a the rifle there. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute. All right, next. Daniel. I'm wondering around why there isn't any dynamite around here. <laughs> <laughs> so all the bison are now watching Mr. Houston. They're not charging anymore. They're just standing there. Is the train driver there? Yes, the driver is there, absolutely. And... Um, his name is... Oh, they printed it double-sided. Yes, the driver is there. His name is Sam. I tell Sam to go forward now. But what about all the bison that are on the track? Don't care. They don't, aren't, they aren't moving right now. Alrighty. He starts to open up a large valve which releases steam into the boiler. Well, the boiler releases steam into the main engines which start to slowly turn. All of you uh, that are in the back, suddenly the train has a slight lurch to it as the traction starts to build in. Are you going to take a shot or are you going to watch? The no, bison because just continues they're staring to stand at there. Yes. No, I'm not going to shoot them because they're standing. All right. Derek? Well, back in my farm, they do this like this, and then I try to shoot some of the bison All right. right there. And I don't succeed. <laughs> All right. Back in my day, we fired <laughs> rifles at the air to hit the animal, and we just waited for the bullet to come down eventually. Yes, yes. All right. Yes, yes. So as you fire off your shot, it almost it seems to break the spell of the bisons. Uh, the bisons, the bison. And they... Again, resume just charging forward into the side of the train. One of the bison... 
<laughs> one of the bison apparently is incredibly athletic and it's just charging over the corpses of its others. It's obviously the bull of the herd and it slams into the side of the engine uh, of the train and its horn catches in one of the circular cylinders on the side of it and just rips open this large rent and fiery hot coals pour out onto it and onto several of the other bison which immediately ignites and starts to spread amongst the the animals they don't flee they continue to slam themselves into the side of the train but now they're on fire elva um i did see other people come in the luggage oh you saw a whole herd of people running but towards the back i want to go actually to the dining area and find, find myself a knife you run into the dining car, you sort of look around, absolutely, you like go to the... Nice to the yeah, kitchen cooking knife. Yes, thing. 100%. You find this very large um, serving knife. You have a fish knife, you have a serving knife, and you have a cleaver. I'm just going to take the fish knife and just hide it somewhere. Where are you going to hide it? Uh, I don't have any... Yeah, I guess if I have a purse, I would put it in my purse. Um, yes, I suppose you have a, a little day purse thing. You, you slide it into the day purse. This crowd then charges past you towards the luggage car as, uh, as they and are. Then I will follow them. And then you follow them as yeah, well. I just want the knife. <laughs> all right, absolutely. Okay, let's just pass that quietly around all the way back down to uh, Josie down there. The train is slowly... It's building up speed. You can see that the large cow catcher on the front of the train, that giant wedge of metal, is slowly pushing the bison aside, but it's still spraying out hot coals onto the side, igniting the corpses as the train continues to surge forward. But it is now starting to move. Every now and again, the train jerks as the wheels skid on the train tracks, which are now covered in bison blood and bits of bison. But the train does seem to be starting to move forward absolutely okay you arrive you run through the dining car uh, you see this uh, you said you uh, what did you dress in uh, very like uh, let's go very colorful dress colorful dress you see all right so sorry the mic should be there you see this lady dressed in a very colorful dress looking very innocent her bag is next to her and uh, then you you run past you get to the luggage um, door, but there is a large padlock on it. So, is this door like between the cars? Yes. Uh, okay, can I examine the lock pads if it is uh, breakable? Well, it's just a good old fashioned hook lock. Mm -hmm. And next to you, there is a large hatchet, which would be used in case of a fire or an emergency. Uh, as to actually picking that lock, if you wanted to try to do that, it's a fairly cheap lock, so you could possibly do it, um, but you are aware that there are at least two women who followed you, um, and, and there's another very quiet figure behind that. Okay, so I turn around to the women I see. Yep and say look as i think the luggage car is the safest place on this train so um if you don't mind we'll try to break this thing that stops us to get into the safe place and ah. so and i grab the uh, the axe, axe yeah. all right, and you're going to smack that axe against the lock. I just grab it. So I'm waiting for the reaction of the girls. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's hand that round. Uh, I wasn't apparently included in that. So I, I, I keep looking at people uh, and thinking that what, how, how are they going to actually open up the lock? Do they have the strength uh, to break it? Because certainly I do not. And... Uh, then I move a bit closer. Uh, I try to take a look at the lock, whether I can do something about it, but it, it, it seems too mechanical of a contraption for my skills. 
Yes, the lock itself. Uh, well, yes and no. The lock, the lock is really just you. You imagine that it has a, a metal bar that slides inside, and it's got a tooth type of system. So all you have to do is slide that tooth back, and then you can open up the lock. So if you had, say, a small paring knife or a strip of metal or a bobby pin from the hair of one of the ladies, you could probably very easily slip it in there and and open it up. It's more of a visual deterrent than anything else. Okay, then I ask around, does somebody have some kind of uh, item that would be suitable uh, to be used as a lockpick? Uh, so that would either be to Elva or to Edith or to um, Josie. Yep. Any, uh, just raise your hand if you need the mic. Yep, yep. Um, I actually have a few bobby pins in my hair to All keep right. it neat. And I offer one to... What was it? Elmer. All right, absolutely. Give me a, uh, what would that be, a locksmith check? Me? I, I, I'm still not sure what to do. <laughs> uh, I, I just stare at it and think like, what, 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 what? I, I know that this should be used somehow, and that thing goes into the hole, and you should, you're supposed to do something in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me uh, a luck check then. <laughs> luck check? <laughs> Uh, luck check says uh, if it's exactly the same percentage if it's exactly the same percentage then any one of you three needs to give me a luck check as well you sort of slide them all in and 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 hope that it opens and you're sort of wiggling it around a little bit all right so the other three of you give me a, a luck check as well and just a thumbs up or down if you succeeded yeah all three of you yeah down up down fiddling around the pin falls on the ground and then you try again and the other pin falls on the ground and then you you run out of pins and then you all sort of looking around on the ground nothing seems to happen all right over to um mr daniel houston who's standing with a rifle um on the engine you can see that you're now starting to move away you 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 are starting to clear the herd they can't keep up with the train okay so they're leaving behind yeah Okay. Uh, well, uh, I just uh, try to, if there's any attached to a train, I just try to uh, get them loose or... Sort of uh, push them off with a rifle. Or, or shoot them. Right. Uh, yes, absolutely. De depending. Okay. So there is one that's on fire and it seems to have been caught up in one of the large pushing arms of the wheel system. So that's causing it to stick every time it comes back, causing the train to have a funny lurching motion. Give it a shot. I actually use my just use my handgun on this. <laughs> right, you just pull out your handgun and you try and shoot the animal. Yeah, I succeed. All right, your shot hits into the animal. Roll a d10 for damage. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Two points of damage, but it is enough to dislodge the uh, animal. It causes it to flinch, and as it does, the arm drives forward, severing the leg from the bison, and the bison falls to the wayside on fire, and the train now starts to move quite quickly. Yep. From the uh, engine, you hear sh Sam shouting, That did it! We're on our way! Let's get out of here! Yeah, and I shout at her, Why did you shoot them when, when they were still? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what he's shouting at you. We're just gonna, I'll come back to you two now. Well, that's what we were told to do. <laughs> like. <laughs> All right, what are you doing now that that? Um, is, is there still coal going outside of the car? Um, it or seems to have got to the point where the coal is now level with that rip. Um, Sam from behind you shouts, "I don't think we've got enough pressure to keep going, though. We're in. We, we're gonna have to stop at some point." I just ask him that, uh, is there anything we can do about a uh, hole or something? Well, there's no way we're going to be able to patch it while we've got live calls in there. That's probably about 500 degrees Celsius in there. Then I just keep on thinking that... There's, a, there's a small siding coming up. It's uh, the village of Ambrose. Uh, we'll put in there and make repairs. That sounds good. All right, let's come back down to um, Della. Um, I'll start heading back to the back of the, car, the train All right. and you see if <laughs> any bisons are following through the windows. With your rifle, you walk mm. back through the lounge car, then you walk through the dining car, and at the far end of the dining car, you can see four figures crouched around the lock, 
that leads into the luggage car. They appear to be, they're literally, much, you know, no, slide it sideways, slide it to the left. No, put it in the front. No, work. However it is that they're busy making this noise. Uh, can I see anything that can break the lock? Or uh, can I well, get the bag of the rifle uh, to do that? Well, Elva is uh, there. Um, uh, Elva has a hatchet or an axe in one hand. Um, Oh, Jossie, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm getting my side tables. Jossie is there with this axe uh, in her hand. You, of course, got the rifle, but... Um, why haven't you used the axe? <laughs> Let's get the microphone over there. I just let those uh, beautiful people to try their skills on the lock picking, I guess. I don't know. I can break it. <laughs> but it's such a brute contraption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to smack it? So, step aside. All right. Give me a strength check, please, as you bring this axe down with all your might. Times five. All right. So you slam this axe against the lock. As you do, the lock breaks open without any difficulty whatsoever. Your bobby pins fly off in all different directions. And the large wooden door slides open revealing inside this large chamber. All right, let's bring the bike back here. Luggage, bags, etc. I'll of. brush through everyone and head straight to the back of the train. All right, so you're sort of pushing through everybody. Is anyone going to try and stop, stop uh, this uh, heavily armed woman with a rifle <laughs> as she's pushing through? No? All right. So you get to the back of the uh, luggage wagon, and you can see that there is a single door there. It's got rather a large, heavy bar across the back, but you can pop that open easily. You open up the door, and you can see behind you this uh, absolute carnage of bits of bison. Some are on fire. There are still other bison standing around eating the corpses that are on fire. They just look absolutely miserable. Are they still following us? No. Okay. Then I uh, just turn around and try to calm down. All right. From the <laughs> You're going to try and calm down. Okay. Well, as we seem to be on our way, yes. uh, I'll start heading back and and hopefully some of the children have fallen out of the <laughs> but, but, but I'm going ba back to see what's, what's going on All right. behind there. So. Um, as you walk back, you pass the conductor, mm -hmm. and he says, Oh, I I'm going to need the rifle back. That belongs to the train. You can have it back when we're at the village that the driver says we're stopping at, because if they come back, because those bisons were mad. You got a point. You can keep the rifle. <laughs> well, at least until we get to Ambrose, mm -hmm. then, then, then it's train property. Okay. All right, as you walk into the, the main uh, lounging area, the kids all look up at you. They look at the rifle, and you get this dead... <gasps> Did you shoot a bison? Did you see they were on fire? And they just start asking you this deluge of questions. In the background, no, children, please, kinder, please be very quiet. Don't is, ask the man a question. He doesn't is, like you. Is the, the bison who rammed his head through... Yeah, the, the head is there. You can see it died. It, it's dead. I'll uh, kick it off. All right, you sort of put your foot on it and yeah. push it out and rolls away into the distance. The kids all watch. <gasps> In I awe. Then you? Then I think yeah, yeah. Then I continue on back to oh, the dining car. Oh, you're going back to the dining car where you now see four people standing around an open doorway with another one further on down the line. Elva. I'm not going to enter the luggage area, but I'm going to look if there's a certain kind of dark brown grave in there. The luggage in here is mostly suitcases. There are several mail bags with uh, large um, bulging with, with mail that's being sent from New York to uh, Los Angeles or wherever it is that the train is going, as well as there are several crates. Um, stacked up in the in the corners mm, and at least three of them are all dark brown okay. uh, i will note them mentally where they are all right just be there 
Okay, so there's a general conference happening in the luggage car, um, as all of you have, have made your way there. Is anyone going to do anything particularly special? Is anyone that wants to do anything uh, specific as the train continues? Other, other than sort of heading back to, to, to wherever? I'll stay at the back and see if anything particularly different from just the train track comes up. All right, so you're sort of watching, legs, you're, you're watching behind. Me. Absolutely. Okay. And I'll stay with her in the back also. All right. In the so luggage compartment. Is anyone leaving the luggage compartment? Let's, let's get that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm grabbing from my bag a medical kit just in case if something happens uh, anymore. Lovely. And then I head uh, back to the lounge. All right. Okay. Anyone else? I'll go back between the cars and I'll just uh, keep on staring at people and watching what happens next. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the luggage, the, the luggage car is quite full of everyone sort of standing there looking at each other um, as some people are looking at luggage and other people are looking at other people looking at luggage. And... The train now is moving at a fairly brisk pace. Maybe 10 minutes have passed when the train starts to rock slightly and it's the sensation of the train changing tracks as she takes a siding line. Five more minutes and now suddenly you're no longer in the wide open spaces uh, of the plain with the snow all around. Suddenly these large pine trees start spreading around you and a few minutes later the train comes to a complete halt as you arrive at the little village of Ambrose. Now on your table you will see there's one piece of paper in the middle of you all. You can turn that over. That is the village of Ambrose. All right. The train comes to a complete screeching stop and there's the venting of the steam so that the engine doesn't explode while she's sitting idle, not using her power. And uh, you are in the top left of the map at the uh, train stop, as you can see that. And the village of Ambrose is a really small, very, very quiet little community. These communities can be found all over the uh, Midwest. They spring up around a mine usually and uh, make some money. And then the mine closes down and the town is left behind that slowly it will wither and die. From where you are, you can almost look down into the town and you can see beyond the town, there is a very large lake that stretches out. It looks particularly cold and bleak. It is midwinter, so the uh, lake itself is not completely frozen over. You can see that there is still a current in the middle, but uh, it's this very dark, dark color. And of course, then there's this little village around that. Uh, there is a rather large cemetery, and at the back of the cemetery, you can see a collection of people standing in a a funeral-like arrangement and there is a priest the priest seems to be either very old or struggling because he every now and again has to be propped up by someone standing next to him as he's giving the last rites to whomever he uh, is burying Follett comes up and he says all right y'all well um, so there's bad news and there's good news what do you want to hear first I'll give you the bad news the bad news is that the train is going to take at least 24 hours to be repaired uh, Sam has told me that we've got to seal that thing otherwise we're just never going to make it above 20 miles an hour and then it will take us a couple months to get back home we don't want that to happen so we're going to take a little break here the good news is the train will pay for your accommodations in the hotel um, uh, we will cover all your costs food accommodation that kind of thing there will be a bar bill don't go crazy but you know you'll have plenty of fun Ambrose is a lovely little town it's been around since the 1850s so I, i'm sure the locals will show you a great time too well all the ones not at the funeral of course i mean they, they probably won't be very high spirits but the rest should be well that's probably the whole town but you'll enjoy yourself enjoy ambrose it's a war it's a, it's yeah just just go if you need luggage from the the, the uh, luggage compartment uh, ask me and I'll, I'll go and fetch whatever it is you need I'll bring it down to the hotel all right uh, well let's start this side is there anything you want from the train well I 
do need my suitcase. All right, um, I make sure you the, 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 that that's delivered along. Not a problem, sir. I have a lady. All right, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am. Sorry, not not a problem, ma'am. I, I I'm under a lot of stress. There's bison. We're just freaky. It's just crazy. And I want to uh, sneak the fire axe with me. <laughs> I'm afraid the axe belongs to the train, ma'am. He. He sees you trying to hide. He really sees you trying to hide. Apparently, he was only looking at where you were holding the axe. Nowhere else. So, uh, I am putting it down in the corner. All right. Uh, he sort of... Yeah, all right. Thank you, ma'am. I'll, I'll get your luggage across. All right. Not a problem. Uh, Derek? Elber? Alma. Yes. Sorry. Wrong way. Alma? Uh, yeah. Uh, I simply asked for my luggage uh, because naturally I need it. I'll make sure it's brought to brought through to the hotel. Not a problem, sir. Thank not you. a problem. I take my handbag with me, and also the med kit, and I ask that my luggage will also be brought to the hotel. All right, not a problem. It's the Shining Light Hotel, from what I understand. Uh, Jenkins and his wife runs it. They're lovely people. I've I've met them. Uh, later on when I go down to the tavern. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, it'll be done. Well, my luggage of course, and I think uh, the rifles should be taken to the hotel as well. And I, uh, as I say this, I sh show the follow my badge. And uh, well, if, the, if the bisons are heading to the town or something, we need to be prepared. Oh my god, you think the bison are gonna come here? I don't know, but we need to be safe. Right, you are. Absolutely. Yeah, all right, absolutely fine. By the way, uh, I'd be much obliged if you did not tell the townsfolk that the bison were killing each other and may come to town. The train does not have room for all of the villagers, uh, and that might cause a panic. Yes, of course. So if you could keep that on the, the down low, I'd, I'd be very appreciative of that fact. All right. Well, we don't want that. But what do we do? then tell the town why our train is in that condition? Oh, just tell them that we got the train from China. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, then I'll head to the hotel and ask for my luggage. Absolutely, ma'am. Uh, I'll just ask for my luggage, too. Absolutely, not a problem. And I'll take the rifle with me. Oh yeah, absolutely. The the, 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 the the detective has requested that all the rifles be taken down to the hotel. I'll keep my rifle right at hand and also ask if the luggage is Absolutely. I will also ask the luggage, but I will ask also ask is the sleeping quarter in very damaged condition? Are our stuff in there gone? Uh, I had a look, see, it, mostly it's just uh, the sides that have been damaged. Everything else seems fine. Good. Uh, then I will go get my fur coat from there and so on. Absolutely. And you want your luggage? Yes. Lucky. Thank you. Very good. All right. So um, as you are disembarking from the train, you're walking down the uh, very slippery stone steps from the train siding, making your way towards the Shining Lights Hotel, which is at the far back of the, uh, the uh, town. You start to see a few things that pop out. There's Arbutnot's General Trading Goods, which looks like a trading store. Um, it um, looks to be fairly well stocked, if somewhat out of date. You pass a, uh, <laughs> a rather interesting looking um, doctor's office. Above it, it says doctor. And then underneath it says veterinarian. And then underneath it says purveyor of fine meat. And... Um, then you pass the town hall. The unusual thing about the town hall is that it looks like it used to be a tavern because it's a double story affair, lots of windows, lots of private chimneys, which would speak normally to perhaps it have been the actual tavern itself. It's also in the main street, which is usually where hotels and taverns are located. So that's the town hall. Then you pass the sheriff's office and um, completely locked up, closed up. You don't see anybody. They're all out in the um, uh, cemetery attending that funeral. 
you pass the butchers and you can see that there is a large rather bedraggled looking Italian flag hanging uh, in the in the background the interesting thing about the butchers is as you're walking past the glass pane windows you look inside to where the meat would normally be displayed on glass plates it's completely empty except for maybe a few it looks like potatoes that have been laid out onto this uh, counter you're not sure but there's no sign of meat whatsoever um, you then um, are looking and continuing along and uh, finally you arrive at the shining light hotel now the shining light hotel looks like a town hall it has a large entrance uh, columns wooden columns with this very high pitched roof doesn't look like it was meant to be multi-storied but someone has definitely added on a second floor and as you arrive the um, proprietor comes forward he is this very very thin man dressed in a very black coat he has a very very black beard and uh, he looks around uh, all of you and he says welcome to the shining light hotel i hope you enjoy your stay here with us would anyone like to buy property in the town how much? Five dollars. What kind of property? Five dollars will get you a stand in the town. Now, for the time period, five dollars is not a lot of money for a stand in town. I can buy that. That's fantastic. I'll tell the mayor that you'd like to buy a property in the town. Sure. Anybody else wanting to buy property in the town? No? All right. He, um... Then this, he uh, then says, would you like a tour of your rooms? He takes you up this rickety flight of steps. Uh, everyone can give me a spot hidden check, please. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. So only two of you, Elmer, the observant, and Daniel, the uh, armed, um, both of you don't see what this lot see. And as you're walking up the stairs, what you, what you see is photographs, these black and white or sepia-toned photographs, lining the wall. It looks to be of children. There must be 20 or 30 photographs of children uh, lining the walls, all framed neatly, uh, covering the walls and at the very center of it is the very severe looking Jenkins the owner of the Shining Light Hotel standing next to a very very thin very very old looking woman and then that's the central picture and then around it are photographs everywhere yeah as, as we're walking the stairs I asked the proprietor about the photographs who are the children and the woman who, who, who is she that's my wife, Iris. That's all he says as he continues up to the top of the stairs. Those, ch those are your children? <laughs> he turns, he gives you this long stare. Your rooms are down here. And he continues to walk down the passageway. All right. I tried to ask, has this been an orphanage or a school before? No. But what is then the story of this fine establishment? Y'all are full of questions. Except for the one about which one is my room. Which one is it? I'm glad you asked, sir. He says as he opens up one of the doors. Each of you gets allocated your own room. The rooms themselves are incredibly well appointed. There's these large four-poster beds, windows looking out, spectacular view from the one side looking out over the plains. Well, forest first, pine forests covered in snow, and then beyond, way beyond the plains. And you think, perhaps, you can see smoke in the very distant horizon as the last of the buffalo put themselves uh, out. Um, that's what you immediately see, yes. Are there any signs of any other customers at the hotel? Nothing. None whatsoever. Uh, down there. 
Have the teacher and the children followed us? That disaster is still disembarking from the train. She's still trying to coax the boys to get their suitcases from the luggage compartment and bring it down and all that kind of nonsense. So they haven't yet joined you, no. Well, then I will ask the owner, the, will the children be joining us? What do you mean, children? There were small boys from like a school trip with our train. Everyone can give me a psychology check. <laughs> no, all right. Yes, no, no. All right, so those of you that passed, even though he has this large black beard, you know for a moment he smiles. There are how many children? I don't know there how many. Dozen? Few? Dozen? There are a dozen children on the train. Oh my god. No, I think she's mistaken. I only saw five of them. That's disappointing. I like children. But five is better than none. We need to talk about your property purchase, but... I would like uh, uh, to request a room far away from the children. Oh, don't you worry about the children. We'll take good care of them. <laughs> That's what he says. I need you all as you... Are you looking around your rooms? Thumb up, thumb down. All right, so you're all looking up. You're looking around your rooms. Give me a search hidden check, please. That's Apparently that's the roll of the month. <laughs> it's a lovely room. It's absolutely spectacular. The room is beautifully appointed. So those of you that failed, you don't know this information. It's a fantastic room. Those of you that passed, it is a great room. But the beds, the beds, you sit on the bed and it's lovely. It's kind of springy. But then you look down at the feet of the beds. They've been bolted to the floor. Does anyone do anything about that? One of you that passed. Let's get the mic over there. I look under the bed. You look under the bed. Uh, it's quite a high clearance. All four posts have been bolted to the floor. And there are leather straps that have been neatly tied back underneath the uh, bed itself. Those straps, you imagine, will be able to be pulled around and brought over the top of the bed, securing anyone uh, to is it. Is the, the man who brought us here we're still... He's kind of lurking in yeah. the passageway. Um, I um, yell at him and, hey, um, what's up with these straps and the bolts? I pointed out and... So everyone grabs uh, now now. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we you, you you shout loud enough that we yes, yeah, I, everybody I hears. Okay, so then I check my bed too because Absolutely. You suddenly look under, you can see that it's strapped down. He looks over at you and he says, "Uh the beds come from the asylum. That's just how we got them." I try to move the mattress uh, to see how the straps go or the straps are woven into the mattress in such a way that if you were on that mattress and the straps had been tied around the bed, you would not be able to move off that yeah. bed. Uh, while, while no one else is uh, looking, uh, I cut the straps on my bed. All right, you just quietly start cutting through the leather. You realize that these, these are tough leather straps, so it takes you quite some time. But you can absolutely do that. No one is looking in your in your room. All that man says, I'm just when well, where is the asylum that you got this from? It burned burned down. Oh. That's right. It burned down. It was tragic, tragic, oh. tragic, tragic. Yeah, burned um, down a long time ago. The, how did the um, beds didn't burn? 
Uh, what's, I think I hear my wife. If you're unhappy with the room, I can put you in another room. Uh, um, I f start to follow him if he's trying to go away. I'm like st still he, starting to ask more he questions. He is slowly about, backing yeah, and away. I'm, and I'm following him. Uh, if you're unhappy, the sir, revolver. about the room, I'll yeah. give you another room. But uh, wasn't all of the beds from the asylum with those st same contraption contraptions? Uh, well, they sure. Well, uh, 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 why, yes, as a matter of fact, they were. But we tied the straps around underneath the bed. They won't bother. They don't jingle when you sleep on the bed. But why didn't the beds burn with the asylum? Uh, it was the first thing we got. Uh, we, we took them out of the asylum while it was why? on fire. There were patients in it. Yeah, that's so a good, there were patients, we're absolutely, we're there were yeah. patients in the bed, and that's why we had to get the bed out of the asylum before it burned down. <laughs> okay, where's the patients are now? They left. <laughs> you just left um, asylum patients. Well, what, once we saved them, the, the, there was no asylum to put them in, so they, they had to go. So there's madmen roaming around here? Oh, no, 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 I mean... I don't really know what happened at the time. I I, I was I wasn't here. I uh, do you want a different room, sir? <laughs> I would like to sleep in a different place. <laughs> oh well, that uh, that's uh, unfortunately this is the only place in town with suitable beds. Um, I'll just leave the um, I'll just leave the hotel then. I'll go outside. All right, you're going outside. Uh, and the, the beds, they were like large four-poster beds. Right. So nothing that you would find in an asylum and nothing that you could actually carry out easily. No, they're on a heavy wooden frame. They've got this rather intricately carved backboard that's got this nice mural of deer drinking at a stream. Each bed probably weighs about 100 kilos. Can you move the mattresses, like, of the bed? Um, so the, the, the mattresses have actually been, uh, the straps have been woven into the mattress, and okay. the straps then have been woven into the metal frame of the bed itself. So you could unplat the whole thing if you really wanted to, but it would take you some time. Uh, I ask, is the owner still around? Uh, he's he's at the top of the stairs, and you can hear him. He's turning away to start going down the stairs. Can I ask him? Does he have any extra mattresses that are not? Uh, no, we don't have any other mattresses. We don't have any other beds. It's a small town. If you don't like the bed, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, maybe you could go and sleep in the tr. No. Uh, <laughs> We just don't have any other beds, all right? So I can bring a blanket so you can sleep on the floor if you really must, but it, it, they're good beds. I would like that very much. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll bring up blankets and you can sleep on the blankets instead of on the damn bed. What's the problem with the bed? He says as he starts walking down the stairs. Yeah. Uh, I wait for the teacher and the children to arrive, and uh, when they arrive, I suggest to the teacher that... Um, Something's not right about this uh, place, and I think uh, it's best for me to keep an eye on the children for the night. The teacher does eventually arrive with the kids, and uh, she looks at you and she says, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. Well, uh, it's a uh, unfamiliar place to us all, and uh, for us to be safe, uh, I think it's best for us to keep the keep together, together oh the proprietor's wife has just shown me the dormitory where the boys will be sleeping it's uh, quite near the church it looked quite nice we were just told to come here but the mayor wants to meet with us all uh, so the boys are not sleeping in the hotel uh, no there's a large dormitory right next to the church they will be sleeping there okay good to know uh, I, I think I'll head there suit yourself but uh, between you and me, I'm rather looking forward to a rather stiff drink. I Switch do not yourself. very much like these boys, <laughs> she says. All right. Uh, anyone doing anything specific? All right. We, let's, let's just start right at, the, right at the end down there and just work our way through. 
Um, there is an announcement that, that is, is made just before everything else sort of happens. Uh, Jenkins calls out, the mayor wants to see you all downstairs. Uh, That's the last you hear. So what are you doing? I will also be doing that, cutting the, the things out. You're busy, you, well, you pull out that knife and you just yeah. start slashing through them. They are very tough, but eventually you've, you've kind of got through them all. Absolutely. After it's done, then I will go down. Oh, with then the, you're gonna, with you're the knife in, in the back. Okay. Knife back in the bag and you go downstairs. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I have the rifle and I've already followed the guy downstairs right. while still asking about the beds. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I don't think he tries to answer no. Eventually he's like, I'm getting blankets, you're going to all sleep on the goddamn floor, right? I'm still asking about it. <laughs> Burnt down, I don't know very much else. Iris, where the hell are you, woman? <laughs> Come and take this man away from me. Uh, all right? Um, I actually want to he head back to the train. All right. Now that everybody else has left um, can I manage to just yeah you leave? get back up to the train you notice that the funeral has now ended and people are now starting to drift back into town uh, at the train you can see Sam and Follett are there looking at the, the gash in the side of the train Sam is going I don't know what the, the power behind that to rip that bloody tank open that's insane I'll, I'll go up to them and ask them if if they have any... So so it's going to take 24 hours to repair the train? Uh, well, we'll put a temporary patch over it. Well, hopefully that will hold. But it should get us you know, as far as Salt Lake City. After that, we can do better repairs there. Okay. Um, I actually forgot something in, in, the, in the train, so I'm just going to go look for it. Follett looks at you, looks at the rifle. Uh, right you are you, you go right ahead you, you mind you don't go into the luggage compartment though I, I would need to come with you if you need to go to the luggage you, are you going to the luggage wagon not at the moment all right well if you need anything just give me a holler I'll be here with Sam yeah sure thing all right Della um, is it it's evening right uh, it's it's just after lunch okay right well I'll go to the meet the mayor and after that head out and just take a walk all right so you kind of go downstairs uh, just remind me what are you wearing again um quite modest dress modest dress okay absolutely yeah well let's go meet the mayor and uh, afterwards um uh, i'll go check the dormitory all right okay um i take a small food knife from my bag <laughs> right. and hide it in my cleavage and I head downstairs. Okay. Elma? Uh, what other furniture is there in the room? Uh, there's a rather robust looking chair made out of wood with a leather seat in it. Then there's a small dresser. And then there's a, uh, on the dresser, there's a, a porcelain bowl and jug. And it has a rather cracked and faded mirror behind it. And then you have a window that looks out over the, uh, the, the lake. Okay, uh, can I move the chair? Yeah, 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 absolutely. But okay. when you pick it up, you're like, oh, it's heavy. But movable. Yeah, but movable. Okay. Uh, I, I, I check the dresser, what's inside. All right. Abs well, as you open up the dresser, you realize that uh, it's mostly full of clothing. And then you realize that it's mostly full of clothing that kids would wear. Uh I dig deeper in the dresser, see if I can find anything strange. Right, give me a history check. History. Fail. Just kids' clothes. Lots of old, dusty, moth-eaten kids' clothes. Uh, for now, I'll just follow... Uh, the sheriff here to the dormitory. All right, so you're, we're going to head down as well. Josie? So Josie checks the furniture. Right. Puts the lipstick on and goes down. All right. So um, you're the last one to go down by virtue of the fact. And all of the others you've gathered downstairs and you can see the mayor. The mayor is this particularly fat gentleman. He has this large cigar which sort of hangs out of the side of his mouth. Surrounding him are four very uh, well-built, 
very handsomely, well, ruggedly handsome young men. They stand there. It's very obvious, strapped to their sides. They've got revolvers, um, six shooters on either side. They stand on either side of him. As you walk down the stairs, all four of them look up at you and they just start whistling. It's like, oh my, what have we here? The other ladies kind of like, oh, okay, welcome to the town. Welcome to the town. My, 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 hi. Well, why, why don't you take a seat, young lady, says the one man. He pulls the chair out, offering a chair for you to seat, uh, take a seat at. So, I tip my lady hat right. and take a seat. All right. He stands uncomfortably close to you. You get the aroma of sweat, which you would expect from a cow hand, perhaps. But there's another smell underneath that. You're not entirely sure what it is. Give me a knowledge check, please. That's just, it's no at the top of your character sheet. It's fresh blood. And when you look down at his boots, he's wearing cowboy boots, but you can see that his chaps, which he's wearing, have fresh blood on them. Whether it's where it comes from, what type of blood, it's just red blood. That's what's up. Right. The mayor steps forward. I want to thank you all for stopping over in Ambrose. Uh, we don't often get visitors uh, down here. I don't know if uh, Jenkins here told you we're selling property uh, in the town uh, for five dollars uh, a piece. That's a good price. The town's got great prospects. The town used to be a silver mine. The mine ran dry, but we're fairly certain we've, uh, we've got the means to make your time here worthwhile. You don't need to do nothing, just contribute to a healthy community. We're looking to build the town up, get people in, get them interested. So, um, my name is Peter Tanner. You can come and ask me anything you like. I will make your stay here in Ambrose as nice as possible. This here is my son, Everett. This is my other son, Everett. That's my third son, Everett. We call him Everett, too. And then that's my other son. His name is Brian. <laughs> and it seems to me like you've got an admirer, ma'am, if I do say so myself. It's lovely when the town gets such a delightful young flower blooming in all this cold. And that's not to say that you other ladies are not uh, pleasing to the eye, of course. I'm, I'm sure you're all perfectly fine in a dim light. So the one that's staying near me is called the... Brian. Brian. Yeah. All right. Uh, feel free to look around. I'm afraid we've just had a funeral, so the town will be kind of depressed. But uh, mind you don't go into the church. It, uh, it, uh, it, it's uh, got termites. Yeah, it's got termites. So uh, it's, uh, you, you want to avoid that. Don't speak to the priest either. He's, uh, uh, let's say he's lost his faith and uh, uh, he's just, ram he's really just rambling. He's rambling. And, uh, oh, oh yeah, I remember now. Uh, the asylum fire was a great tragedy for the town. And uh, I know many of y'all are quite curious as to the beds. Uh, you shouldn't worry or fret none about that. That's just the way the, the town is. We we don't have a lot of supplies here. We don't have a lot of wood around. Uh, we, we, we don't have a carpenter to turn the forest that surrounds the entire town into beds or furniture. So uh, that's, that's we, we got to make do with what we got to make do with, right? That's why we're trying to build skills in our town. That's why you should buy property uh, in the town. Now, I believe uh, you, you, you are looking to purchase property here, uh, ma'am. Yes, if it does include land. We'll give you any land you like. We can walk around tomorrow morning. You can check it out. We can give you as much land as you like. Five dollars. No questions asked. Build a little house for you. We'll get the... We'll bring a carpenter in from Salt Lake City to build a house for you. And it'll be absolutely fine. You can marry Everett. He's available. 
<laughs> sure, we can talk about that later on. All right, Everett number two then. <laughs> He's got good bones. I was talking about the land. So you'll take Everett two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have another question about the mine. Are we allowed to enter there? I wouldn't go down the mines. It's ancient history. Uh, the, you know, it closed quite some time ago. Uh, it's a bit dangerous to go there now, really. Uh, especially in winter. Uh, gets cold in the mine, I would imagine. Not that I've been there. Then I have a third question. So of questions. I like questions. So How about Everett 1? <laughs> we can think about that later. You hear that, Everett? She's got eyes on you. She's thinking about it. Uh, but you said the church is full of termites, and you're putting the kids in there? Uh, they're in a dormitory next to the church. Oh, oh, the termites, the darnest thing. They, it's an act to God. That's what it is. They're just in the church. The dormitory is absolutely fine. And for the safety of the kids, it's off limits to, to strangers. Obviously, the teacher can go in there, but we don't want the kids to, to, to panic or, or, or anything like that, right? Actually, I was thinking if I could uh, join tomorrow uh, to look around the area. You you want to you want to buy property in our town? Uh, I might want to check the property first, but I might consider it. What about ever too? <laughs> <laughs> and also, I was thinking that uh, for one teacher to look out all of these children must be a big burden so I was thinking of offering to help her and uh, join the dor dormitory for the night no oh, that won't be a problem Christine will look after her Christine is the midwife of the town uh, she she's done kids she knows kids really well yeah, uh, thank you for the offer though Edward I, too however he can show you around tomorrow uh, I actually insist that uh, I asked the teacher if it would be okay if I join her with the children. The teacher looks up from the bat. What? <laughs> yes, I have another one. Just <laughs> keep them coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, more. Thank you very much. She looks up. You, you want to help me with the children? Sure. Wunderbar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me with those little assholes. It's fine. More, I said. More. She's busy getting herself completely sozzled uh, at the at the bar. Absolutely. So I decide to. After. Uh, all right, you can you can have out of the dormitory, I suppose. But in exchange, give Everett to a chance. I'll think about it. You hear that, Everett? She's thinking about it. <laughs> well, uh, when we came to town, we couldn't help, but there was a funeral, so. Oh, the mighty shameful! Mighty shameful! Who died? Uh, the dead one. It, it was, uh, we, we, uh, 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 it, it, it was, uh, 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 it was a tragedy, an accident, a child, uh, died. A child died? Yeah. Who's? Uh, I don't, uh, probably, uh, our, it was Iris Jenkins' child that died. Okay, so the propri proprietors must be grief struck. Well, just look at him, he says, pointing at Jenkins, who's just standing there with his black beard. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I just uh, say to other passengers uh, uh, that we can make uh, plans for the children and, uh, and uh, sleeping um, the arrangements uh, between ourselves, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, Dilla heads out before the mayor can finish. She cannot decide if she offended or not by the <laughs> actions. All right. <laughs> and she'll head to the church. All right. As you step out away from everybody else, you hear the ching ching of spurs as worn by the cowboys. And you look behind you to see Everett three, you think. He's standing there with his hand tucked into his belt, just looking at you. I nod and continue. You nod at him mm -hmm. while he smiles. <laughs> and you hear ching, ching, ching as he's starting to walk behind you casually as you, you're going to cross the road. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'd like to walk alone. Thanks for the offer. 
don't you need a guide to show you around the town? No, thank you. I'll manage. But it's dangerous to be out in the cold all alone. You need someone to warm you up. I do have warm clothes, and it's not that bad yet. I think I'm going to have to insist that I come with you. It wouldn't be very neighborly to let you wander around unprotected. But I do insist going alone. All right, I understand. You want to take things slow. I appreciate you're a woman of the world. I'll just follow in the distance in case there's a bear or something that might come out. I, 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 I can appreciate that. Well, I'm sure you, you'll hear that about that if that happens. I guess it's not that big of a town. You may be right, but I would rather not risk losing such a delicate beauty like yourself. Sure. sure. And you have childbearing hips. That makes you important. Not anymore. And I turn around and continue on. As you continue on, you hear ching. Ching, as he's following. Let's hand the mic down that way. While they have that conversation, I'll chip in uh, with my rifle that I can take care of this lady. Um, we, we've known each other in the uh, train trip. I'll take care of it. I have this rifle. It's going to be better. Um, I will look at you and like try to show that I'm just get, going, trying to get him away. That I'm not like trying to and like head with out with you oh that would be so lovely <laughs> thank you <laughs> well shoot talk about taking a man's thunder away sure <laughs> i he, suppose he, it's fine does he follow them the two of you start walking down the dirt road towards what looks to be the church and um, after a few moments you hear ching ching uh, as he's he's left about 50 meters behind you and he's just casually when you look back it looks like he's just walking casually down the street i'll change um whisper to you that let's go to the train so they don't think and then change the direction to that train all right let's go all the way down the end as we work our way through what everyone is doing so what are you doing the mayor is uh once he has said his piece um, he will pick you up in the morning to take you to show property. In the, in the meantime, have a great evening, and I will be back tomorrow. All right, so what are you doing? I will just go finish the cutting of the things. All right, so you go back up and you kind of carry on cutting. I know what you're doing. What are you doing, Daniel? Well, I'm in the, in the train, in the lounge car, and right. I'm actually trying to quickly sort of look to everybody's stuff that's maybe been left behind okay you're starting to rifle through there's there hasn't been a lot left uh, and in the lounge car you can see all the way through to the dining car and then the uh, uh, luggage car right at the end okay and what are ralph and sam doing are they outside they're are they outside they're busy dealing with the steam engine in the lounge car you can actually barely hear them because they're so far away okay then i um actually try to sneak into the lounge uh, to the um, luggage car sure not a problem no one's seeing you okay you get in there and uh, then I start looking at um, at the stuff that's there all right mail bags there's some uh, heavy wooden crates schoolboys well, suitcases yeah, well first first mail bags if they're everything that's not locked basically just None of it seems to be locked. Okay. Um, the mailbags contain mail. Yeah. You sort of rifle through the top of it, and it's, it seems to be mail all the way down. Yeah. You move on from there? Yeah, and then... Um, well, I'll, I'll pick... If, are, the, are the wooden crates uh, nailed shut? Yeah, the wooden crates, uh, they stand about as high as these tables. So okay. about mm, maybe just under a meter, by a meter by a meter. And yes, they have been uh, nailed shut, but there is a crowbar lying next to them. It's obviously was used to load them in, and it will be used to unload them. Um, are there any markings on the on the? Uh, all three of them have been stamped with a very large sign, which says the Johnson's Soap Company, and it's just stamped. 
Okay. And what about the ladies' luggage? Is it there still? There? Uh, you can see it's all been lined up next to the door and uh, is going to be then obviously taken down to the uh, hotel. Okay. I will try to take a quick look around at the ladies' luggage. Luggage. Too. All right. Absolutely. You're off to the church. Let's hand it over this way. Oh, you changed direction yeah, towards the yeah. train. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Sorry, yes, we'll do that. Yeah. Well, as I said before, I'm heading to, to the, the, the church. Dorm. The, do uh, the do dormitory first and then the right. church, yeah. So, as you were heading towards the dormitory, you see these two start to walk together. They were sort of walking towards the church. There was Everett three following behind them at quite a distance. Then they suddenly break away and they start heading up towards the train. Okay. Everett three saunters slowly behind them. What are you doing? Um, well, can I just, uh, when the Everett's uh, attention is uh, on them, can I just uh, slip past him? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you slip past him again towards the church and the dormitory. All right. The church, the doors have all been boarded up. Planks have been hammered over them and the doors are now sealed completely. Next to the church is this very crude looking um, room almost. Um, it's not even on the map. Um, maybe it's 10 meters long by three meters wide, single story high, uh, with again, a large door. The curious thing about the door is that there is a very large padlock, but it is on this side, that's outside. Okay. Um, is you there can hear the sound of chaos coming from inside. Okay. Kids shouting and jumping and playing and there's an occasional thump as their head hits the floor and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, how does it look from the inside? Well, you get up to the door mm. and it's locked. Okay, and it's the only door? Uh, looking around, yes. There is a second door into the church, which is slightly open, but the rest of it, the, 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 there's no other door into the dormitory. Okay, hmm. Well, uh, can I go to the dormitory through the church? Um, it does look like there might be a little connecting corridor, yes. Yeah, and, and the church, uh, can I go in there? You can go in through the back door of the church, yes. Yeah. All right, okay, so as you push your way in, you're going to have to give me a sanity check. Let's move the mic on in the meantime. Uh, I go upstairs and gather up my things. Right. And I also head to the dormitory. I have the blankets and all my stuff with me. <laughs> you're carrying these old blankets and things. All right, so yeah. you're heading towards the dormitory. Yeah. Um, Edith, as you, as you step out, Everett steps out behind you. Are, are you going for a picnic? Uh, no, I'm heading to the dormitory to help with the children. Oh, yeah, that's right. You'll need the key. Uh do you have it or where can I get it? I'll get it from my pa. He comes back a few moments later. I have the key. Um, I ask him to hand it over. All right. He takes you down to the dormitory. You see the dormitory. You don't see him. He unlocks it. Uh, are you sure you want to go in there, ma'am? Uh, I'm sure. You said you were going to buy property here. Is that right? Um, yes, I'm considering it in the morning then. As you say that, he drops down to one knee. <laughs> in that case, then, if I could have your hand in marriage, you're, you're, the, you're certainly the most graceful of the women that's arrived in this town in 20 years. I, I pledge my life to you. I want to have as many children with you as you possibly can have. Um, uh, are there, the door is open. Or well, the, lock, the key is in the lock. Um, I hear the yelling yeah. from there, and uh, is there any thumbs or...? Yeah, yeah, it's kids running and yeah. jumping and... Uh, I kind of like turn around and... Uh, Don't and break my heart! <laughs> Tell me yes! Uh, I say that I can at the moment. I own lots of land, I'll make you happy. <laughs> I'll buy you more blankets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I say that uh, we'll have to see later because uh, for that we need to have my father's approval, of course, and my 
father is currently at the hospital at, in New York, so... Well, he's probably going to die <laughs> before we get the message out. They just say yes. <laughs> I'm not accustomed to being told no. I'm sorry, but I have to lay you down at the moment. He stands up, he gives you this cold stare, and he says, You will be mine. I quickly go inside. <laughs> All right, you <laughs> run inside. It is pandemonium. The kids have got these very badly made beds. There's pillows, there's feathers everywhere as the kids are just bashing each other and having an absolutely marvelous time. Elmer, what are you doing? Uh, I actually follow the sheriff still. Uh, you're following the detective. The detective. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've seen him showing the badge, uh, and I catch up with him. All right. This uh, is as he's going into the church. You're going to follow him into the church. Yes. And as he's entering the church, I catch up with him and ask, uh, "Sorry, sir, are you really an officer of the law?" Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, I am. Why are you asking? No reason. I just uh, feel that it's more secure than that, that when there is uh, somebody representing the law in this place. And I just follow him. Oh, sure. Uh, there's something shady in this town and uh, I don't know if, if, it, if this church has the termites or if it's something else, but uh, are you armed? Only with my mind. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Has our luggage already? Yes, you see uh, Jenkins sort of coming in carrying bags and things. Brian, of course, is still hovering directly behind you. Uh, so the moment you stand up, he kind of pulls your chair aside. Uh, he, he. Yeah. So, uh, Brian, uh, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, um, would you be so kind to show young lady the town? After I just change myself up in my room. Just oh, sure, 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 absolutely, I'll show you around, ma'am. I'll give you... I'll, absolutely, I'll show you around. Okay, thank you. You, you going to change? Yeah, sure. C can I help you? No, no, I can't help you change. Uh, I'll, I'll wait down here. Do you, you want something to drink? I can get you something to drink. I, uh, what, what, what do you drink? You probably drink whiskey. No, you don't drink whiskey. You're a woman. You've got refined taste. You probably, you're, you're more, you probably drink beer. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, you are so fun. What, what? We, we'll you hear that, that part? You should call me fun. <laughs> and I take my suitcase and go up to the... Oh, no, 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 no. Wife of mine is carrying a suitcase. He says as he grabs a suitcase and he sort of runs up his head. I'll put this in your room. He runs okay. past. He comes back. Uh, what room are you in? I uh, go slowly and right. don't tell him just for him to follow me. Oh, I got you. I got you. I know my place. I'll be good to you. Don't you worry. He says as he uh, follows along uh, behind you. You get to your, your room. Yeah, so... Uh, the moment the suitcase is in and yes. Brian is not. Yes. I uh, show him a finger. Oh, I respect Brian. that. I respect that. I'll wait until tonight. And I absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I shut the doors. Are, are there any lockers in the doors? Uh, so there, the, the, <laughs> you go to lock the door and the lock has been removed. Removed. So the door will stay shut, but the, where there would normally be a keyhole, mm -hmm. that whole device has just been completely removed. So it's like a peephole. Pretty much. Actually. Pretty much. You hear on the other side this soft thumping sound, and when you look through the keyhole, you can see that Brian has sat down in front of the door. Okay. So uh, I take um, my knife out of the back. Right. With myself. So we'll just make it myself warmer and then I'll go outside. All right, okay. So the two of you that are walking into the church, uh, sand checks. Okay. You. Yep, 10. Pass. Pass, all right. So the church is. As you step in, 
there is this smell that just slams into you. It is an oily, it coats you. It, it's as if you stepped into the worst cesspit ever. You just, it just smells of fecal matter and urine. There's this stench in the air. And the room that you've stepped into is a little side room that would then lead into the main uh, church itself. You can see that someone has coated the walls with excrement and just ripped paintings and thrown them on the floor. Uh, and then there's the door which leads into the main part of the church itself. Do you continue in? Well, I had my rifle. Well, I had my rifle to you and uh, take my service revolver and head on, head on. Do you follow, Elm? At a distance, yes. <laughs> At a distance, right. The smell is absolutely. Look around for any uh, texts, any logs, any any records that I might find telling what 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 is going on in here. All right. So, as you um, enter into the main part of the church, the crucifixion of Christ, which would normally hang at the uh, altar itself, has been thrown onto the floor and scratched into the chest of Christ himself is the words eat the lamb that's been scratched into into the body and um, the the cross itself the crucifix itself is broken underneath it it looks soggy is a very old book it does not say the bible on anywhere I try to pry the book from underneath the crucifix. All right. Would you please give me a, um, let's see, uh, give me a power check, I suppose we could do. Oh, no, give me a constitution check. Give me a constitution. I, I help lift that crucifix. You help, you sort of lift it up. Absolutely. Uh, you try and hold an area that hasn't been covered in, in, in matter. You hold your stomach. You grab the book. You realize the pages are damp because someone has urinated on the book and you, you lift it up. As you look at it, you realize that written on the cover is this very ancient script. It looks like it's, is it Urdu or Hindi perhaps? But it's definitely from the Indian subcontinent. And it's a very old book. We're talking 17th, 16th century uh, type of book. It should not be here. Uh, I try to figure out next what the book actually is. Look at the cover. Look, look what the text might mean because uh, I have some skills in Hindi. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Let's go back to you because it's been a while since we've been down that side. Let's get the mic all the way down there. I actually don't know what to do now, but I guess after this I would go to the train. You're going to go to the, the train? Yes. All right. Let's go to the people on the train first. So that was you and you two were heading up to the train. All right. So I'm going to go to the you two heading up to the train first because you're still looking through luggage and that sort of thing. Um, when we see the um, people at the, like the conductor and stuff, I yes. ask him that is it possible to sleep on the train? And before he can answer, I'm like... Um, the beds of there are um, apparently from asylum but they look very sturdy and not movable an asylum but, yeah and I, asylum I, yeah they say that the, there was an asylum that burned here and they didn't Ambrose it, never had an asylum yeah, there's not I, enough I, people in that weren't having an asylum here why yeah they well, who they, told you there was an asylum yeah, I think they, someone's pulling your leg yeah that's why I thought and I would like to sleep in the uh, train because this is very very weird and I don't feel safe in the inn. It's gonna get mighty cold on the train. I don't care. I'll, I'll be fine. I've used to in the cold in the farms. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll put you, you. Yeah, I suppose you can stay in the train. Oh, there isn't a asylum. I just. No, Ambrose never had an asylum. Okay. I think I they're probably I'm pulling your leg. It's like small town humor. 
They don't get many visitors around here. Between you and me, this siding is only here because originally the train tracks came down here to the mine. The mine closed down, so the siding was just never shut down. Well, it was lucky for us because we couldn't get anywhere further. So, uh, Have but, you yeah. heard about the Church of the Termites in there? Oh, I don't know much about Ambrose. We, like I said, we never come down here. Okay, right. So... May I head uh, into the train? I guess I misplaced my lucky coin. Well, sure, you can head on up into the uh, carriage. It's not a problem. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Meanwhile, you are now doing what exactly? Uh, have I sort of very quickly looked at everything? Yeah, you just haven't opened the crates, basically. Everything else you've sort of rifled through. Doesn't seem to be anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. Nothing stood out as anything. Are you looking for anything in particular? Well, anything that points to someone being not who they are, or, or if there is money, large amounts of money. No, certainly okay. you haven't seen that yet. Yep. Okay, so um, then I move on to the crates, and I sort of push. Are they of equal weight? All, if I sort of. Yeah. All right, all right. That's an interesting, uh, interesting sort of thing to do. You push them around. One of them certainly seems to be lighter than the other two. All right. Um, then I'll try to open that one with the crowbar. All right. You hear the footfalls of someone approaching. Okay. Then I'll go to my own luggage and, and pretend all right. that I'm just looking at my own. I'm just looking for stuff. Yeah. All right. You arrive in the luggage uh, compartment to find Daniel looking at his luggage. Yeah. I'll, um, I'm like, hello. And uh, then I will say that um, the bits have straps in them and apparently there has never been an asylum here. So we are lied and I don't really like this town. I'm going to live he like, uh, sleep here, but I think we should probably not trust these people. And, and then I'm like, uh, do you need something here? Do No, I was just making sure everything was as it should be after, you know, everything. Mm. Yeah, I, did, I didn't notice them originally, the beds, but I do. And, well, how was the mayor like? Because that Jenkins was really shifty. Well, the mayor was equ equally shifty and he... Um, apparently, the innkeeper told about the asylum lie to the mayor, and he was trying to cover up with the mayor, uh, asylum lie, al lie also. And I think there's some kind of uh, conspiracy around here. Something I would just want to leave as soon as possible. Yeah, well, we do need the train for that, and that's well. I do know enough about engineering to know that that's going to take some time. Uh, probably we should get everybody together. Yeah, that's probably what we should do. Yeah. All right. That's what's happening on the town, town side. Are you going to do anything specific? Um, do I hear them talking at some yeah, point? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do I hear them, their conversation? What was it about? Uh, pretty much, because they weren't whispering or anything like that, yeah? Okay. Yeah, and I'll go to them as I buy the coin. All right. As a matter of fact, you also arrive at the train, so all four of you are now at the train, just for convenience sake. If you need to have a conversation, have it now between the lot of you. And I'm going to pass the mic over to, 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 to this way. All right. Uh, yeah, let's start with you and work our way across. Yeah, it's um, quite dark in this church because all the windows are boarded up and everything is boarded up. Um, yeah, and it just smells absolutely vile. Yeah, well, as uh, he is, or is it she, he or she? He. Yeah. Uh, well, as he is uh, looking at the book, uh, I just look around and uh, first I try to look the way through the dormitory. Uh -huh. So in the side of the church, um, you can see that there's a very crude door that has been hacked into the original wall. 
and then the doors cover that hole and you can hear the sounds of kids coming from the other side. Okay, can I open it? Absolutely. Yep. All right. There is a big bar on this side of the door. So you would imagine once you're in the dormitory, you're either going out the front door, which was locked, or you're going out here, which has got a big bar across it. Okay. All right, so you're going to go through that. You're going to um, go into the dormitory. Yep. You see her uh, standing in the dormitory. What were you doing in the dormitory? The kids all look at you and they're like, Oh, hello, miss! Hi! Hello, miss! Hello, miss! Watch out, miss! The pillow sails past your head as they someone threw it. It's like, don't throw the pillow at the lady! Uh, I take a step back and I also count the children. And <laughs> there are nine. Okay. Uh, and I also make sure, uh, tell them to kind of... Uh, get themselves like a buddy like they make sure that okay if somebody is missing that there's like assigned buddies but there's only uh, there's one free persons group and I also notice that a detective is there and I yeah and I kind of said that I got freaked out from was it Edward or that guy who was there I think um, this dormitory, well, it's sketchy at best, and I think the children should be moved back to the train and take those quilts and uh, other warm stuff that's in here to the train with the children. All right, I'll let you two have a conversation about that. Elmer, it's it's dim and dark in here. Uh, it's, so I cannot actually see the book that well. You can... F- it, it's damp, so and you know why it's damp, so you, you're not really wanting to touch it. But yes, you 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 can't really see it very clearly. If you if you push open a, a shutter on the window, you might get in some more light. Or if you went outside. Are there any candles? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, there are. Most of them are on the floor, but there are one or two that are, are still in the uh, candle holders. Absolutely. Uh, I light a couple of those and sure. move the book next to them because I'm solely concentrated on the book now. Absolutely. I'm not, not not really actually following what's happening around me. Right. Uh, the book is disgusting. It smells yes. horrible. Yes. Yet I cannot put it down. As you light the candles and you look at the book, you realize that the book's cover. It looks like it's stretched skin that's dried. Give me a sanity check. Fail. You lose 11 sanity as you realize that this book's cover is made out of human skin that's been stretched over it. Using a very ancient technique, uh, the book's name then is illuminated. The book is called the Shivaran Kampuri, which talks about the sacrifice of Shivra. At least that's what you seem to remember. It's a very ancient tale about a. Uh, you think it was a god who had to sacrifice his son in a battle against. Uh, you'd think it was Kali, the goddess of evil and the world eater. You're not entirely sure. The book will probably detail that. Uh, I put Do you open the book? Yes, I open the book. I also uh, just put a note for myself that uh, the whole thing with a crucifix and with a Christ on it and with a text. What, what did it say again? The text said, eat the lamb. Eat the lamb. Correct. And it kind of resonates with that story to a certain degree. Then I start reading the book. All right, so you open it out to chapter one. Yes. Okay. Chapter one says, The clouds grew dark as Lord Shiva did battle with the cursed god Kali. Strong though he was, her power was fed by her evil soul and her cheating. She'd poisoned the good god Shiva, and now her poison threatened to bring about his defeat. His only son, Rashiva, threw himself into the battle with his father, and together the pair beat back the black spider. Underneath is written in English a note which basically says, what a lovely little legend these delightful Indians have concocted for themselves. If only our religions were as exuberant and as exciting. Signed, uh, Lord Reginald at the bottom. So it's obviously the book was found by this Lord Reginald 
and he's just annoting it as he goes along rather badly ruining an ancient text there is obviously more to the book do you carry on reading mm, yes I do all right let's go over to uh, young uh, Josie there yeah. so uh, is it possible for me to like strap the knife under the coat sure yeah. absolutely so yeah uh, I, I, I go to the right I go out of the room oh Brian I mean, you look so pretty it's amazing it's a transformation you're even more pretty than you were before yeah yeah words words you men are those <laughs> uh, where, where, where do you want to go well I've seen the beautiful flag of another country here is this something interesting uh uh well normally i'd take you out to the lake but it, it's mighty cold down there right, right yeah. now uh otherwise I, I i know of a good spot uh it's real private like and and we can talk some more okay well, okay uh, just let us walk around the town before oh sure this. oh sh oh sure yeah, oh sure. sure absolutely well the spot is near the mine so we, we got to go through town anyway yeah and, sure. and, and anyway should, should i should i bring like a, a blanket yeah and probably something like to drink you know? oh yeah of course absolutely absolutely uh, yeah 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 absolutely so he kind of bounces around you quite exuberantly as he goes down stairs. He kind of goes, he slides over the bar, he grabs some bottles. Then he puts some of them back and he, he grabs another bottle and he sort of looks at it and he's like, You like wine, right? Well, what uh, year is it from? Like a sort of fine I, I can't read. I don't know. <laughs> but it's a good one because he put it down here. He puts all those good stuff underneath the counter. The bad stuff goes up there for the customer. Yeah. So we, we'll, we'll take this one, it's great. Okay. So he sort of bundles everything up. He runs to the front door, which he sort of pushes open with his shoulders and then holds open for you to walk through. Okay. So I just uh, silently walk and listen if he says anything. <laughs> right. He, um, he follows along quite, quite, quite eagerly. Where are you heading specifically? Or are you just sort of wandering? So... Uh, the, my uh, player's plan <laughs> was to just uh, see most buildings of the town right and then go to this place which Brian met. with him yeah most of the buildings that you you pass they seem to be okay but again uh, they're now people moving around when they see you uh, most of the women when they see you they look at you with pity mm -hmm. and one of them when she sees you she just starts crying and she rushes indoors okay so there are women in the town yeah yeah okay. they are but m none of them look like they are taking any effort to look good to dress up mm -hmm. they are all very pale give me a spot hidden check They, yeah, they're all pale, just, they look miserable, they're all pregnant. Okay, uh, so, and I was especially interested in the butchers. Sure, he, you, so, you walk up to the butcher. You, you want, you, you, you want to go to the butcher? Well, you know, I, I like strong men who can cut the meat. I'm strong, I can cut meat. So I'll skin a deer in like five, five, ten, fifteen minutes straight up, and I'll cut that. I'll cut that sucker. I, you want a deer? Well, why not? If you can do it yourself. You, you want one now? When, if not now? I am leaving tomorrow. Oh, ah! <laughs> He kind of puts the blanket in your arms and then he sort of puts the bottle on top. I'm going to get you deer right now. Right now, he says. And he just goes rushing off down the street. Pa, I need my gun. I need my gun. Pa, I need to go and shoot deer. He says as he rushes off uh, to try and, try, and, try and get his gun. Okay. Uh, and then where, where are you going to go from there? Because now you're completely alone. So I wanted to investigate the butchers. All right. So you're going to go into the butcher shop. All right. Let's get the microphone down the side. Have you guys had a conversation? You... You're thinking of what you're doing? 
Uh, well, we were talking amongst each other, and uh, we found out that uh, well, uh, she told us that there's uh, money in one of the boxes, and we kind of rustled them. Something and, valuable. Or well, something valuable. Rustled them and found the one that was lighter. And um, we were thinking that at least I'm going to sleep in the car, like train, because I don't want to sleep in the beds. And we were thinking that at the night, or like planning that at night I could uh, very carefully open the box and stuff like that. All right. So, so you were going to try and open the lighter box, but yeah, you're going to wait until right. night. Yeah. Oh well, at least for a while because it will make noises and we don't want the conductor. All right, so notice. are all four of you going to hunker down in the train? No, not hunk down, probably just to, like... Sort of hang out in the train. Talking, but probably we have switched to the um, dining area. Right, like right, right, right. But you're staying at the train, basically. Yeah. Well, after we have this conversation, because I was already... I was thinking that because they told me about all this dodgy stuff in... in because, I mean, I wasn't that... that there. Um, I was kind of worried for all of us uh, and then I decide that um, before hunkering down in the train I need to know more about the town and that sort of thing and I tell the, tell you all and you can decide what you want to do that I'm going to go and take a walk around the town and see what's where and and who's and what I can discover more about this town okay um, I'd like to come with you. All right, where are you Glad two going to gonna head specifically? Just walk around the town to see, you know, the, wh where are the limits and where are the people, and also see maybe this. Do you tell me about the fact that the, the church was forbidden? Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, um, I ask her that um, maybe church, we could check the church because I don't trust the mayor that much at the moment since the incident and the, he said that the church had termites and he could not and the dormitory is next to it though where the school kids are like hanging up. You tell him that too. Uh, whatever you like, we can go to the cemetery as well. So, which one first? I think we could uh, walk through the town and then double back through the cemetery to the church. All right, not a problem. Uh, are you two going to stay on the train? These two uh, yeah, yeah, we were talking that we are going to... Um look around if the conductor and um, the train uh, people are leaving any soon and then I'm just drinking in the dining room and waiting around if um, it would get um, more um, private. <laughs> right, absolutely. Okay, uh, the train conductor and the um, engineer, you can hear them banging and trying to put the metal plate over this whole thing. So it's making a lot of noise. A hell of a lot of noise. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you to keep watch and I'm going to try, start to try slowly and quietly open the lighter box. All right. You pulling on this. Give me a strength check, please. You're going to add 20% to your roll or deduct 20% from your actual roll. So it's eight. <laughs> <laughs> You slide the crowbar in and you go, and the lift goes, and just falls in one clean shot down onto the uh, table. Not a problem, onto the uh, floor. It's just soap, Lay little blocks of soap all over the place. Then I will put the lid back on and try the another one. All right. <laughs> if I see this, because yes. I'm thinking of us, uh, I would say, dig on the soap, dig on the soap. Th then I will do that. You lift the first layer of soap off, and underneath is freshly packed hundred-dollar bills. I start taking them all off and putting um, into my bag and uh, probably her bag too. You run out of bags. Um, then I will take. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you I just start shoving the money yeah. into everyone's bag. Yeah. 
no, 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 only four just into your four yeah. bags. It's like, all right, we're putting, we're, we're, we're transferring across just tons and tons of tons of cash. It's a whole meter by meter block of cash that smells vaguely of lavender because that's the soap that was uh, containing it. All right, so that's what you two are doing. You're heading down towards the graveyard. I'm just going to stay with you guys for a little while. Forgive me, guys. After we are done with the money, we will put the lift back on. Yes, yes, absolutely. And put all the like, things we take on from the back into the box. So got you, didn't. got you, got you, got you. Um, the two of you head down to the cemetery. And there's only one thing that's slightly curious, perhaps, is that there are very old tombstones dating back from the 1850s. But then the rest of the tombstones are labeled... T1, T2, T3, B1, all the way up to B5. Then there's TA1. Then another one is MR1 through 4. MR1, MR2, MR3, MR4. Then there's another one, G1, G2. Then there's one that goes from A1, A2, all the way up to A6. And then there's another one that says J1, J2, J3, J4, J5. And the latest, freshest grave is J6. I'll come back to you guys. Okay, let's send the mic down there as you contemplate what's going on. All right, so the two of you are uh, uh, we, in the dormitory. Well, we three, actually. Uh, All three? Okay, yeah, we, so, we, uh, uh, yeah. Alma, you've you stopped reading. Yeah, we agree. I was reading until I was interrupted. Just give him the mic, sorry. Yeah. I was reading by, but I was interrupted by this too, uh, because they had an agenda. Ah. Yeah, we have a plan that uh, we uh, uh, take the children and uh, take them to the train, and with blankets and all other stuff to keep them warm. And uh, she will uh, go out the same way that she came in and uh, tell the Everett that um, <laughs> the children are sleeping and <laughs> not to be disturbed and <laughs> so on. All right. So we smug smuggle the children as quietly as possible into the train, and uh, and I, we try to ma make it like a game for them, so that the children think that this is a hide and seek type place. So they need to be quiet. <laughs> and how are you going to smuggle them out? Out through the church? Yeah, through the church. All right. The it's the only way. <laughs> yep. So as you're like, all right. It's a game. Remember, quiet. <laughs> you open the door. Go into the big dark space. It smells like shit. <laughs> the first kid steps forward. He's like, "Ew! I'm not going in there. Why would I go in there? That's nasty. That's no." Can I uh, try to persuade them? Do you want to persuade them? Do you want to show them your gun? Uh, what, 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 you yeah, want to try and persuade them? Yeah, once we get to the train, I, I will teach you how to shoot. <laughs> You're good with kids. <laughs> they just start filing past quietly. <laughs> Some of them are imaginarily lo loading. <laughs> sort of, they hold their noses and, and that sort of thing. And there's a little bit of whispering now and then. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, they, they, they sort of file through. Nice and make their way towards the uh, train. You can hear coming from the train yard the sort of tang, 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 tang. As you can see, the conductor and company are uh, busy uh, trying to fix the train itself. Let's go all the way down to Elva. Uh, Elma, you f are you following? Sorry, Elma? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am following. So you've closed the book. Uh, I closed the book. Uh, I follow these people and all the children as well throughout the smelly church uh, and at the same time I'm thinking whatever happened to the bisons what actually made them to behave as they did right absolutely that's what you're thinking who knows what the answer is Elva Josie Josie sorry why do I keep calling you Elva Josie absolutely so, uh, is the butcher open? Yes. Open. So, you push open the door of the uh, butcher and um, it looks like you're interrupting an argument between the husband and the wife. And they're shouting at the top of their lungs in Italian at one another. Uh, as soon as you walk in, she looks over at you and she rushes forward. 
and she says, please, 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 apologies to Italians, please, 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 you, you, you must leave right now. There is, there is great, oops. She suddenly is flung forward and she falls towards you. Her husband, this large Italian, has just thrown this heavy meat cleaver into the middle of her back. And she just collapses in your arms as blood now starts to spurt out of her mouth. And she says, you must get out. And then she starts to collapse. So uh, is the meat cleaver takeable out? It's in her back. Yes, so absolutely. Give me a sanity check, please. Sanity check, okay. Yeah. No. Not so good. Six sanity points gone. The large Italian is stepping forward saying, uh, please, uh, senorita, do not move. Uh, so, is the cleaver... It's still stuck? embedded in her back. Yeah, warm blood is still spraying out of her lifeless corpse. So, I'm throwing this corpse into the butcher. All right, give me a strength check. Yeah, yeah. All right, you somehow summon up the strength to lift this dying woman. She's still sort of gurgling as she's saying her prayers, and you sort of throw her at the Italian. I'm a strong girl, you know. <laughs> Apparently. He catches her with one hand and pushes her aside. Oh, okay. Apparently he's super strong. So, uh, I want to run out. Do not scream, he says. Okay. So I want to run out silently. <laughs> you turn and just start running towards the door. Standing at the other side of the door, is is it ever one or two or three you're not sure mm -hmm. but he's standing in the doorway he looks straight at you okay that's what he does what are you doing so i'm not saying anything but i want to rush towards him all right so yeah you can absolutely you get up to the doorway itself mm -hmm. he steps and you can see he's put his boot against the bottom of the door so you can't open it up the Italian is stepping slowly and carefully towards you. Okay, then. Uh, I take out my knife and turn to the Italian. That is not... Uh, Bella, it's not going to help you, all right? We want to hurt you. Put the knife away. No, we won't. We don't want to hurt. You. It's uh, him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but <Butchero. laughs> We don't want to hurt you, huh? Okay. So don't. Put the knife down. Let me away. See, you make my wife very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> now she wants to do this stupid thing, and that we cannot allow. So you're gonna have to come with me, huh? I got a nice bed downstairs. It will be great for you. No, no, I have my room already in a um, shining light with a nice bed. I can See, come you with you. You can't talk to the other passengers now. You have seen this. No, no, I have seen worse. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a persuasion uh, roll there or... Um, uh, I beg your pardon? Uh, fast talk, fast talk, thank you. Fast, fast talk. talk. Okay. Nah, no, persuasion would work, but not fast talk. No? No. All right. Uh, so now you should try. Uh, no, you stay here with me now. You are not my wife. <laughs> okay, then I attack. <laughs> you yeah. just attack him. All right, absolutely. We're going to come back here this side as uh, the kids are slowly fighting their way towards the train. The I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so I close the church's door and lock it. All right. Uh, is Everett, Everett looks down. Well, looks at you. Yeah. Uh, and you I change your mind. Um, well, actually, the kids are sleeping at the moment. So I was thinking of uh, doing an evening stroll. Uh, but well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> I don't care about them goddamn kids. That's my dad's problem. Let's go. Um, 
I want to see the graveyard. <laughs> what the hell do you want to see the graveyard for? Um, because it's very interesting to see like the families and people like that. So, but of course, uh, it would be nice if ever it was kind of like close because I'm a small woman. But yeah, you want me to get close to you? No, no, no. You uh, know, like um, walk along. But I want to see like and ask about the history and the graves. <laughs> well, I guess. It's I can sh tell you some of the history, I suppose. And it's kind of weird going around a graveyard, but sure. <coughs> yeah, right. we'll but, uh, well, is there a library in the town? <laughs> is there yeah. a library in the town? No, there's not a library in the town. So the closest thing to a library is actually the graveyard, because you can see if there has been any pandemics or any sicknesses, if a lot of people have died. How the died is the graveyard going to tell you all that? You can see the dates, usually, on the graveyard. You can read? Yes. Oh. Uh, well, that explains things then. Yeah, I suppose we can go to the graveyard, he says. Give me your hand. Well, he holds his arm out. Um, I'm actually pretty sharp. And I... <laughs> I, <clears throat> I still have my things with me. So I actually hand him my handbag so he can carry it for me. <laughs> I am woman, you strange city folk. It's very weird. All right, let's go to the goddamn graveyard, I suppose. We can do it anywhere, really. It's a bit weird on the grave. All right, so that's where you are heading around. You get to the graveyard and you see the same thing. There are, from 1850 uh, until 1855, mm. names plus dates. Yeah. Then after that, it just changes to T1, T2, T3, B1, TA1, MR1, etc., etc. It just starts changing, changing to those numbers. Uh, so there are like tens of these graves that are just T1, J1. So from 1855 onwards, that's the yeah. only type of grave that there is. And uh, in total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's probably about 20, 25 graves. Okay. Do we see... Uh, yeah, you come around the corner. Everett At coming. the moment Everett sees these two, he's like, oh, well, the spot's taken. We're going to have to go somewhere else. That's such a pity. You two see her and Everett coming around the corner. Okay. I, I'll wave and, and um, say, uh, sorry, could I just have um, just a quiet word with the fellow passenger about, about the train, you see? Oh, God uh, damn it. All right, fine. We're going to get our business on, woman. Yeah, yeah. Just a, just a moment. And I'll, I'll try to pull her aside so that Everett won't hear. Well, hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says, seeing you standing there. Um, I, I hear you turn my brother down. <clears throat> I tell that two of the passengers and the kids are going back to the train. And... Yes, of course. And... They are <laughs> now talking, and I ask how the other passengers are. Um, well, I tell you that these two are in the train. I have no idea about the others. And then I say that that there's something, I whisper, there's something really weird going on here. Have you seen any kids around? And there are really, really lots of graves that are just weirdly marked. I think, I think we need to get to the train, all of us. Um, I agree, and I was thinking of that we should go and look for the other people. Bang! The uh, shot goes off. <laughs> you and you are busy walking with the kids towards the train as quietly as you possibly can when this loud gunshot goes off. You can see the mayor is standing in the central street. He's got a revolver out. He's looking at you lot with the kids, and he's just fired off the shot. Okay. What in goddamn name are you doing? None of your business. <laughs> None of your business. Those kids are under the town's protection. They're under my protection. According to whom? Well... 
You wanna argue with that? I I got my I got my revolver also in hand. You got your back uh, your revolver in hand, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. Yes. Yeah. Those kids are. Uh, I don't. Not leaving the town. You got a choice: either you do or you don't. I thought they were continuing the journey with us tomorrow, so I don't think there's difference if they're sleeping in the dormitory or in the train. And I think the train is much, much safer. Joining him, stepping out of the office that has a, a sheriff's sort of sign hanging over it, mm. is another very large man. Yeah. And he uh, looks up at you and he says, I I'm sorry, but these children are now ours. They're not going. I, I, they're they're in my care. I just uh, shout to the children that run to the train. <laughs> there is another gunshot as the mayor fires towards the kids, causing them to just sort of freeze. Mm. Those kids are not leaving Ambrose. I don't think I made myself clear. And I shoot the mayor. <laughs> 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 all right, let's get the mic all the way down that way. As uh, we find out what these two are doing, you're hearing gunshots going off. You're hearing uh, shouting and all kinds of things happening. I start running towards uh, um, gunshots with my rifle ready. So you're leaving the suitcases full of cash and you're now just running with your rifle. Uh, yeah, well, the suitcases aren't going anywhere. <laughs> they're full and they're closed and... <laughs> Nobody's seeing that they're full of money, so yeah, I want to um, go see what's happening. And all right, that's what you're doing. <laughs> I'm staying with the suitcases. My <laughs> precious. <laughs> I was thinking of running, but I will. I will just stay and wait. All right, if so I see the town people coming. Yes. Then I will take suitcases and run to the forest and hide in there. <laughs> but if I only see like the town people, men. So going. where you're standing, you well in the in the train, you sort of look down into the town. You can see uh, Derek running with his rifle. There's almost a line that's now being formed, and you've got the uh, detective apparently with Elmer. Um, and just the, just the two of you, uh, with the kids standing in a showdown with the fat mayor and some other fat guy that you don't really recognize. And um, behind him, you can see stepping out some of the young Everett brothers uh, further down the, the, the street. And then there's something happening in the graveyard, but you're not sure about what, what's going on down there. And All actually, right. the kids have stopped, but I keep on running. <laughs> I'm out! I'm out! <laughs> Don't shoot me! All right, so you're just running towards the train. <laughs> All right. Okay, so are you going to grab the suitcases and run into the forest, or are you going to stay there? Um, fuck it, I will take the suitcases and go to the forest. I will go... Are you going to take all four suitcases, or are you just going to take two suitcases and run? I'm just going to run in my back and take two with me, so I'm leaving one. <laughs> right. You leap out the other side into the frosty cold snow and you're like... I have my fur coat. You do have your fur coat. All right. And you start trudging out into the forest. Okay. Back to poor old Jossie, who's just attacked this six foot seven <laughs> Italian butcher. <laughs> yeah. give, give me your attack with your knife. Nah. I am Brian's, not yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear give me an, a, a strength check please success success okay he grabs your knife hand and very easily just turns it sideways I don't like women who fight and he looks down at his wife <laughs> no just behave it won't last long and it won't hurt much well well okay but a women, woman cannot have uh, two men <laughs> i don't what do you mean two men like 
I have uh, Brian already and now you and this is all so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is an idiot. Don't worry about Brian. Well, will you take care of him? You don't think I can take care of Brian? Well, let me see first. You think I am just as simple woman as your previous one? <laughs> 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 I'll show you that Brian is a complete uh, waste of time. But first, I need to make sure you are, uh, how we say, ready. And he starts dragging you towards stairs, which you can see that go down into a basement. So, okay, wait, wait, I can go uh, without the dragging. I, and I go, uh, so I follow him without dragging, if it is you possible. You see, it's going to be very nice. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes, no more. <laughs> and he points towards the basement stairs. That's when you hear the loud gunshots outside. Mm -hmm. He stops. He sees, he looks to the doorway. You see Everett, who was standing blocking the door. He turns and he starts running off up towards the street. What do you do? The doorway is now unblocked. So, is she still holding me? He's still holding me? No, no. The moment you said, I can, I can walk, he went, okay. But he is standing behind. No, kind of next to you, but but uh, not not completely blocking off exit to that door. So I try running. <laughs> 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 All right, give me a dexterity check, please. As you, uh, uh, is it dexterity? Do we have a dexterity check there? Yes. You succeed. It's All right. He kind of grabs at you. Says something very horrid in Italian, which I won't repeat. And uh, you dash towards the door. You run out and you can see that the Everett brothers have now formed a line with the mayor and the sheriff. And then these guys are on the other side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alma, would you please give me a spot hidden check as you're running towards the train? Your favorite role? Fail. All right. You see nothing happening at the train whatsoever. You run past... Nope. Uh, everything that's going on and uh, you don't even see Derek running past you with a rifle you just you focus that's, that's, that's very typical of me yes <laughs> all right absolutely and let's go to the graveyard the moment you hear that gunshot the two of you the Everett that was with you he kind of looks at now nah, what god damn you're gonna have to wait for sex <laughs> he says as he turns and starts striding through the uh, graveyard <coughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Um, should we follow them? Um, I actually cock my rifle, point it at his back, and says, "Say, uh, Trevor, you aren't going anywhere before I get some explanations about what is going on here." He turns slowly. With the dead kids in the ground, that's not normal. Well, where else are you going to put them? In a tree? <laughs> yeah, but why are there so many dead kids here? That's not normal that all of them die because there aren't any kids in this town. Give me a spot hidden check. Yeah, he fails as well. You see his hand going for the revolver at his side. Well, I'm pointing a yeah? gun at him and said, I wouldn't. Well, I... Well, if, if he does that, then I'll shoot. All right, make <laughs> your shot, because he's going to go for his pistol, uh, his revolver. And I fail. <laughs> <laughs> he fires back at you. He does not fail. He hits you. Three points of damage. As the bullet grazes across your arm, there's a loud <coughs> shot next to you. What are you doing? Um, I actually have a revolver too, since I'm also a detective. <laughs> and <laughs> you act pretty fast, but I, I was trying to like take it out. <laughs> but you already made the shot. All right. You're going to shoot him? Um... I'll try, yeah. Make your attack. Uh, 
And I fail. <laughs> you fail. There's another shot next to you as apparently <laughs> she's armed. All right, that's what's happening there. And what are you doing? Yeah. And you have a rifle. I believe so. Yeah. And I'll try and take a shot. Make your attack. You hit him directly in the head. Roll your damage. You're using a rifle, so that's 3d10 for the sake. Twenty-one damage. All right. So a you fired less. the shot. You blew apart a piece of the church. You fired at him, and you blow out the window of the baker, and then his head explodes as she just points the rifle directly at him and fires. Brains spray out the back, and he just drops to the floor, That's completely nasty. unmoving. You're hearing shots going off in the distance. You've arrived with our two detectives. Well, with the detective. So I'm going to come to the detective first. I'll come back yeah. to you just now. Yeah. yeah. So I shot Anna uh, immediately after I take cover. <laughs> you sort of <laughs> There's a rain barrel conveniently located by the edge of the building because that's what there are. Yeah, and I succeed. All right, who are you shooting? The mayor. The mayor. All right, absolutely. Do your damage. You're using a revolver, right? So it's yep. a D10. Ten. Ten. Oh! He just collapses back onto the ground, blood spurting out of his chest. The uh, sheriff looks, you're under you're arrest! <laughs> <laughs> you shot the goddamn mayor! <laughs> he shouts. He fires back at you. Completely misses. Uh, Alma, you, uh, which carriage are you running towards? The dining car, the uh, sleeping car, the... I assume that uh, I'm pushing from back. Actually, no, wait a minute. Uh, okay, from the front of the train, so uh, towards the engine. You're uh, running towards the engine. You can see that Sam and the conductor, the, the, the conductor is, uh, they're, they're looking down at the street. I shout at them, they'll go grab the kids. The conductor's like, I, I, ain't, I ain't grabbing shit, man. I'm not, oh my God. What's going on? Why are they shooting at, the, why, why did he shoot the mayor? I mean, that's, Sam is like, I'll get the kids. He just starts, he just starts running towards the kids as fast as he can. All right, you beasties, come here. Come here, you little buggers. You're going to get shot. That's what he's doing as he rushes off. I also point my rifle uh, at Ralph and say, oh, and tell him to follow Sam. What? I, I, he starts following Sam. He's sort of doing a, a, a jog type of slow walk. He looks back. He checks. Are you still pointing the rifle at him? <laughs> yeah, I, I just nod at him because I, I, I totally know what it feels like. <laughs> right. He kind of... Y y Y'all kids, come here now. C come here. God damn it, come here, you little swines. All right, so that's what he's doing. Back to you, detective. The Everett brothers, there's two of them. One has now taken up behind the uh, tavern or behind one of the walls. The other one is standing in the middle of the street looking at you and at the sheriff who's also looking at you. What are you doing? Okay, uh, so I'm behind a barrel at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I just uh, try to keep them uh, away. Uh, so, I fire one that, that that's in sight, in the in the open. All right. So that would be the sheriff. He's too fat to have moved out of the way. Okay. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> with that uh, with that roll, which is ninety nine, um, I need everybody else to roll a d ten, please. Anyone who rolls a three, let me know. You rolled a three. No. Anyone else roll a th anyone roll a three? No. All right. The bullet pierces through a window somewhere in the distance. There's a loud screech from a cat as it <laughs> meets its final life. None of you get hit by this random rogue bullet that uh, <laughs> sailed off in that direction. All right. Yes. So. So I'm just asking a question about yeah. what's yeah. going on. So so uh, we're at the church. Yes. And and one of the guys is in uh, one of the Everett's is in front of the tavern. Yeah. Okay. Correct. And the kids are. Everyone. So that Central Street that runs okay. all the way through Ambrose. That's where pretty much everybody is. 
except for um, Josie, who's uh, at the butchers, which is uh, on the corner up there. And then you guys, were, you are in the graveyard behind the church. Um, and you, of course, who is heading north through the pine forest. That's right. Do are you making your way back to the train tracks, by the way? I'm using them a little bit, and then I'm All right. All right, you're using the train tracks a little bit. All right. So do we see her coming out of the butchers? Uh, from where you are, yes, you can. You see uh, Josie just pull open that door. I'm assuming you're heading out the door, right? Can she see uh, us? Um, I'm going to say no, not at this point in time. All she can see is directly in front of her and away from the giant mad Italian. Well, I'll shout to her that, Hoi, we are here. All right, you're shouting to her, we're over here. Okay, I'm going to come over to you. You're like, oh, hi. <laughs> uh, later. <laughs> Where are you running? To the train. You're just, you're like, hi. <laughs> and then you run to the train in the yeah. opposite direction. All right, so, so she sees you clearly. And then she runs another way. She's covered in blood. That's what you see of her. Because the Italian lady bled all over you. It was very inconvenient. But yes, you see that she's covered in blood. A few moments later, this very large Italian man gets to the door frame. You come back here now, you hear me? I am your man. Have I remembered the curse word he said? Yeah. I said his back <laughs> to him. <laughs> You have a bad off on you! And he shouts. He's also covered in blood. Let's get the bike back down here. Um, I guess I'll try find coverage in the church. You're going to run into the church? Fantastic. Give me a sanity check. Eight. You walk into that church. It's like, hmm, smells like home. All right? <laughs> um, I'll run by the church and between the sheriffs and building and on the corner here because that's where the shouting is all right and if i see everett brothers or yes, any of the that's town exactly folks. what you do as you're running between the two buildings you can see the sheriff who's he's sort of waddling towards this large it would have been a water trough but it's now completely frozen over he's trying to take cover two of the everett brothers are now moving Again, quite stealthily along, along these buildings here, along the side of the buildings, the opposite street near the town hall. Okay, I take cover here, and then I take a shot at um, one of the Everett brothers, so they that they'll have at least have to stop moving towards. All right, that's the what you're doing. Make your attack. Fake. All right. Yeah, well, I run there. I, I probably see all this. Yeah, and because I probably see you, ha him uh, shooting the mayor. Correct. Um, uh, I, who am, do I have a clear shot at anyone? Uh, well, the at sheriff I, is. Well, he's trying to hide behind a water barrel, but that would be like me trying to hide behind a matchstick. Oh uh, well, I'll try to shoot him with okay. the rifle. Make your attack. It's a success. 3d10 damage as your blast rips through him. Um, <laughs> it's 20. Yeah. 20 damage. Yeah. You watch as the large form of the mayor just drops and bounces quietly as it settles into the dust, completely dead. You're hearing more gunshots. I keep on going. Keep on going, keep on going. I try to find the way to the track where the splits. Yes. And then heads where I would think would be like a nearest road or the city. All or right, like that absolutely. Then. So are you going to go back the way you came and it was about a day's travel? No, I'm going to go the other way. You're heading towards Salt Lake City for yes. what the geography is worth. All right. So you set out on those tracks, suitcases. You estimate you've got about 75,000 US dollars in those bags. I know. And you just start walking. All right. Absolutely. Lovely. Okay. Let's come to this side. <coughs> so 
So I was at the graveyard too. That's right. You are now just with her. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yes, you went into the church. You're on your own. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I was thinking that since everyone seems distracted, and I was thinking of getting like the teacher and the other people back to the train because it the things are getting pretty heated. So <laughs> I things are getting pretty heated. There are three dead men <laughs> in the road. Yeah, yeah, they're getting pretty heated. Yeah. Yeah. So I go back to the hotel. And try to avoid everyone around. All right, you're going to sort of slink down and around the back. Yeah. Back way. All right, that's going to take you a little bit of time, but that's definitely where you're heading. All right? Yes. Let's go um, all the way over to... Um, well, Alma, what are you doing? Well, since I'm, I'm conveniently in place and I don't have to do actually anything except just to uh, watch what happens from the side, uh, <laughs> I continue. Are you taking cover inside the train? Uh, no, just ju just by the engine itself. All right, so you're just uh, standing there. Uh, right. but yeah, or hide between the wheels or somewhere convenient. Fi 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 find like a small cranny or a nook where I can sit. All right. And absolutely. then I yeah? continue reading the book. You continue reading the book. <laughs> ah, you bastard! <laughs> There's gunshots going on. You're like, okay, page two. <laughs> ah, all right, so give me a sanity check, please. I beg your pardon? Failed. Failed. Three down. What are you on now? Uh, 26. 26. Yes. All right. The so the paragraph... Was 11, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the paragraph continues. In her final moment, Carly spat her last poison at Shiva. It burned into his soul. His only chance of surviving was to consume his son. Rashiva did not hesitate, but drew his dagger and cut out his own heart, offering it to his father. Grief-stricken, Shiva did consume the heart of his son, and in that act was so saved from the poison. He took the dying form of Kali, and in his anger he imprisoned her in a tomb of pure darkness. The note written by uh, the general or the major, uh, Reginald, writes, Well, that's pretty damn depressing, but you know what these types are like. They'll look for any excuse not to work. That's what he's written on that page. All right, and you continue to, to hide. Josie, you are running for your life for the train. You run past the detective and um, Derek with his rifle. Yeah, and has uh, um, the, 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 so the kids with uh, Sam, Yes, they started? Yeah, he's not? starting to sort of herd them as best he can. He's trying to shield them from any bullets that might fly past them. So I'm just screaming, help, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, rushing to the train. All right, you're shouting, help! And then you're just rushing, running as fast as you possibly can. Yeah, so uh, I even don't turn to see if the Italian is following me or not. That's right, you're just right. running, absolutely. I hear some noise in the background, and I put my hands on my ears so I can concentrate better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so that's what you're seeing. Uh, let's come back to the detective now. Um, the Everett brothers are going to shoot at you. Okay. So there's two of them. And this, you see out of the corner of your eye, this large Italian, and in both hands, he just has these meat cleavers. But he doesn't seem to care about you. He apparently is walking towards the train where this young girl has just run, covered in blood, screaming, help me, help me, help me. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first shot gets uh, fired at you, completely misses. The second shot from the second Everett brother, oh, hits... Ouch. And uh, so you can give me a dodge check. Yep. I think you have dodge. Yeah, I have. Nope. Nope. All right. Is this the end of the detective? 12. 22 damage. Yeah, I'm dead. As you're running past the detective, maybe it's because you shouted help. 
Maybe it's because it's a giant Italian with a meat cleaver. How do you die? Well, uh, I'm. It's the showdown, uh, taking shots and uh, cover and uh, just one unlucky shot. <laughs> Where did it hit you? I guess uh, while she's running past me, I just take a glance and at the same time I just feel blank and notice coldness spreading through my chest and as I slump down on the street. Absolutely lovely. So you collapse next to your water barrel that you've hidden behind, blood gushing from your chest, your back having been blown out all over the place. All right, one down, seven to go. So, <laughs> all right, so you collapse down um, into the, the dust. All right, as you are running with your suitcase, let's get the mic all the way down there. Mm. Yes. You think you hear thunder. Thunder? Yes. It's like this low rumbling thunderous sound. Um Do I see any loud? Like You look around? No, it's late afternoon in winter, it's clear blue sky. Give me a spot hidden check. Uh, that's that's a failure. Clear blue sky in all directions. The thunder is getting louder. Well, I know if there's thunder, I will hide them uh, um, into the forest. So I'm going to leave the tracks and go yes. into the forest? Yes, I'm going to go to the forest for a little way. All right, so you start to head into the forest. As and you start to move towards the forest, the thunder suddenly starts going moo. <laughs> And you cause to look behind you, charging along those train tracks, are the buffalo. Uh, can I climb the tree? That's what you're going to start doing. Yes. All right. Give me a climb check. I will just drop one. Then <laughs> I, I have one suitcase. Back. I'm going to... How many are you leaving behind? I have one in my back. Yes. So I'm dropping the two and like climbing. All right. No. <laughs> you drop the two, you've, you've put your foot on the first branch. That's $50,000 that you're leaving on the ground. Maybe if you can just reach the one, you can sling it up into the tree. It pops open and notes fall all around in the snow, causing you to maybe not climb as fast as you should have because you want to grab the notes. Anyway, you don't start climbing the tree. The bison are now charging directly in your path. I will. I'll, uh, I'll come back to you. Yes. All right, back to rifle. Uh, Derek, what are you doing? Um, you see the detective uh, slump against the barrel, blood pouring out of his chest. Well, <laughs> there's not much to do. There's a giant Italian with meat cleavers walking um, up the street, following along yeah, the woman covered in blood, screaming, help, help, help. Yeah, but is he um, trying to come towards me at all? He doesn't look like he's after you at all. The two Everett brothers down the street, however, certainly do look like they're focused entirely on you. Mm, well, I'll try to get some cover. Sure, yeah, yeah, you can I'll hide behind the take barrel. The, take the shot and then I'll try to shoot one of the ever. Make an attack. Um, yes. Yeah. It's a hit? Yeah. All right, hit. you're using a rifle? Yes. 3 to 10. Oh, I'm bad at that. 17. 17. 17 damage. Yes. You drop one of the Everett brothers. I don't know if you want to read that. You, it slams into, into his upper shoulder. For a moment, he kind of looks pained. He looks back at you. He tries to raise his arm and realizes that his hand doesn't seem to move. He drops his pistol from his hand and then he leans against the wall and he sort of slides down it with this slightly confused expression upon his face. What are you doing? Well, I take a shot at the remaining Everett brother, and then um, I'll start working my way, you know, dodge out of the way, and then try to work my way towards the train. All right. And I miss. All right, there's a loud shot that goes off, misses completely. Then I 
And then you start making your way towards the train. Do I hear? The, uh, do I hear the help? Uh, yes, yeah, she was screaming help, running up the street, covered in blood. Everyone uh, heard. Then I'll peek out the church and do I see the Italian? Yes. Yeah. And I then shoot him. Make your attack. That's a clean shot. Do your damage. Three D ten. Nineteen damage. The blast hits him in the back. And there's a, a welt that appears in his forward bicep. And he turns and he looks at you. That's not very nice. And then he falls over completely dead. Unmoving. Leaving the Edward brothers uh, to their fate. You get to the uh, hotel. And um, Iris, the uh, hotel's, uh, the, the uh, proprietor's wife, is there. And she looks at you and she says... You, you got to get out of town. You got to run. They're after <coughs> you. Uh, I agree. And I ask if the teacher is still there. And hey, I it's the lady from <laughs> the train. Hello, how are you? Very much. I'm fine. Guten Tag. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Where are those little brats? I cannot stand them. I wish I'd never become a teacher. But unfortunately, Prussia forced me to do this. Uh, I actually send her to the, go to the train. On no, her I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm now married. My okay. husband's name, I think, is Everett. <laughs> uh, which one of the Everts? There's more than one. <laughs> There's three. <laughs> You're going to cut down on the drinking. There's only one Everett. Uh, well, they're brothers, but... Well, good luck for you. Um... I decide that I'll be going back to the train uh, behind through the forest, behind the houses. All right. As you uh, start heading through the forest, you uh, start to hear thunder. Uh, I check around to right. see where it comes from. Check. Uh, success. All right. You look around and you can see just spreading through the forest the herd of bison and they just seem to be charging through if you don't move quickly they are going to take you out i'm going behind a sturdy tree so that they will run right past me that's what you're hoping they do i'm from africa i can tell you that's not what they do <laughs> all right so you uh, try and hide behind a tree absolutely alma so i'm sitting here uh, as it happens, I do not hear the thunder. No. Because I have my hands on my ears, because uh, I don't want to hear anyone screaming either. Okay, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm still, still stuck there. Uh, but then again, uh, I'm hopefully halfway hidden and partially uh, safe. Uh, well, everyone's looking at the crazy young lady covered in blood shouting, help, help, help. So no one is looking at you, yes? Yes. Uh, so at this moment, uh, probably I would try to keep on reading the book. Give me another sanity check, if you please. I still have some left. Uh, fail. <laughs> I, I thought as much. All right, uh, so we are at chapter three. Twelve gone. Do you have anything left? Uh, well, I have 14 left. All right, you now believe that you are the embodiment of uh, Shiva. You, uh, you, you quite possibly were given this book because you are Shiva and you have been brought back here to save humanity from, from, from all of the evil in the world. Including bisons. If that is what you feel is the enemy of the human people, then Shiva the god is wrathful and shall destroy. Yes, that's, that's, that, that, that sounds ex exactly right to me right now. All right, since you cannot see or hear any bison at the current moment in time... That's true. What does the great god Shiva feel about a woman covered in blood running towards him shouting for help? You know, with, with this sanity, that's completely normal. 
that's that's what he <laughs> expects to see. All right, fantastic. You carry uh, on. So so you carry on reading your your great book. Then. Yes. All right. Yes, the book continues. Once his horrid task was done, he looked upon the lifeless body of his son, but the corpse spoke. Its soulless eyes looked up from behind tears. Father, I am here inside with Carly. I am alone. I am afraid. Father, I am too weak to fight her. Please, I need help, Father. Shiva, so mortified that he trapped his own sign inside the prison, was about to break it open when a wise man from the village bade him to pause. There is still another chapter beyond that. Uh, at this point, I think I have some sort of an understanding what happened in the village, even as misguided as it might be. Right. Uh, I stand up and I head towards the mine. You just stand up and you just start walking through everyone. Kids yes. screaming, running around you. Sam's running around you. Gunshots exactly. going off. You just walk past the corpse Calmly of the Italian, forward. past the yes. corpse of the sheriff. Uh, Josie, you see Elmer, he sort of stands up, looks like he's walking towards you until he walks just right past you as if you weren't even there. Uh, he looks and, as and if he's... And as I walk past, I give you the rifle. Because I don't need it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, uh, which part of the train is closer to... Uh, most likely okay. the um, the engine side of it. And the conductor is there? Uh, Sam and the conductor are trying to get the kids onto the train as fast as they possibly can. So I turn around to see whether the Italian is still chasing me? He's dead, lying face down, cleavers in the dirt, almost near the corpse of the uh, detective. Okay... Um then yeah yeah i pick up the rifle you pick up the rifle yeah, just in case you know <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so the kids are far away or not uh they are all sitting absolutely quietly inside that lounge car faces planted against the window watching the showdown so they are already in the train yeah yeah they as they as they climb in they immediately run to the windows and they all start looking out to watch the uh, so bloody uh, battle i shout to the sam start out the engine we have to go oh you don't have to tell me that twice he says he looks over at you uh, do you mind if i start the engine or maybe uh, rather i mean or do you want me to run into the middle of a battle As there's only one brother back, I keep my rifle at him, but I um, yell at Sam that don't leave without me. And then I scream as hard as I can, train is leaving. And then I start to back up to the um, train. Towards the train, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but still keeping the rifle yes. at the Yes, all right, there's time. one Everett brother left. He's going to take a, a shot at you because you're the only one sort of standing there. 94, the shot buries itself in the ground about three and a half meters away from you. <laughs> nowhere near you whatsoever. Um, would you please give me a spot hidden? And you can give me a spot hidden as well. Nope. Okay, great. You both hear him shouting, everyone get back to the train. The train is leaving. Okay, what are you two doing? Uh, the mic. Yeah. You've been making your way around, so yeah. I'll try to start and run for the train. You're going to run for the train because I'm at the church. Yes, uh, I'm like the furthest away. Okay, absolutely. Um. Yeah, I think I'm going to do the same. But I know the Everett brother is there, so I'm still trying to sort of That's right. you were sneak going past be, the be behind the butchers, yeah. yes. So. All right, so you're also going to head towards the train. Okay, you're going to stay dead. What are you doing? <laughs> um, well, the bisons were there, so... That's right. So you're just you're waiting for them to move past. Yeah. Um, how much are there, or, like, they're around... Oh dear. 
All right, you're going to have to give me a climb check, please, because the first bison uh, charges past you. Its horn clips your shoulder and spins you out. Um, I fail. So the horn clips your shoulder and spins you out from the tree line. You look up into the head of this bison as it just thunders directly towards you. You try and leap up into the tree and you failed. You get slammed by this bison at full speed. You take eight damage. Okay. <coughs> I have four left. Give me a dexterity check because you have to roll out the way as the rest of the herd now just tries to run over you. How do you die? <laughs> uh, I against um, that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the horns pierce me through. The horns pierce you through. All right. Absolutely. And I'm stuck on its head. <laughs> <laughs> the bison runs around. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. All right. So you are skewered on the on the horns of one of these uh, bison. All right. You are making your way towards the uh, mine, uh, completely oblivious to everything that's going on. You're just going straight towards that mine. Yes. All right. Are the bison's coming? You do hear this distant thunderous sound. From which direction? Uh, from this side of the town, from the east. Yeah. I just keep on walking slowly towards, towards the, mine. the mines. All right, absolutely. Okay, the train is starting to chuff as the steam is building up. Sam is just shoveling coal as fast as he possibly can into the great moor of the uh, engines. You failed your climb check. Your suitcase is, is there. The next minute, you see this bison break through the tree line, charging along the train tracks. What are you doing? So I'm in a tree or? On Not yet. You Not tried to climb it, but you couldn't. Now there's money sprayed around all over the ground. Uh. So they are coming in the trucks. They're and just, it looks like they're just sweeping across this whole plain. They're going to come through the forest, past you, etc. Uh, how wide they are and coming in the forest? Can I just run deeper and deeper in the forest and dodge them? Absolutely you can. Okay, trap out the bag, run deeper in the forest. So and one bag in the backpack, one bag here holding. Yeah. All right, yeah. give me a constitution uh, check, please. Yes. All right, and you're wearing brown clothing, right? Your furs. Yes, fur. I said I was going to get myself a deer. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a deer. <laughs> there is a loud shot, and the tree next to you explodes as this bullet slams into it. Someone is shooting at you. You don't know from where. Run, 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 God run. God damn it! I'm going to get it again! All right, I'll come back to you. Uh, Derek? Uh, last thing, I'm oh going to yeah. stream, uh, yell at him in Russian. <laughs> Just some God broken damn him. Russian! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I'm backing down to the train. Uh, there is still one Everett brother in the town. Um, how close I am to the train? Um, you're about 50 meters from the train, and the Everett brother is about 50 meters from you. Um, is he loading his gun, or is... He's he got a, a pistol. Okay, I'm gonna try to shoot him. him. Yeah. All right, it's a hit. It's a hit. Do your damage. Slaughtering the whole town. Just absolutely take them all out. Um, fourteen. Fourteen. All right, you uh, fire the bullet that kills the last Everett brother. I don't even uh, want to have a read well, of that. Well, then I... Um, he collapses backwards. Yeah. Well, then I just turn around and run run to the train. All right. You just run to the train. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, I, then I'm going to try to help Sam to get 
Get it as fast as I can. Well, at least someone's giving me some help. Yeah. He says he's busy shoveling <laughs> yeah. and coal. You watch that gauge. The moment that gauge gets to 15, we've got enough pressure to start going. All right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you also watch that outer plate. We didn't finish riveting it in properly. If it starts to bulge, you tell me, because the engine's about to explode. All right? Yeah, all right. Great. <laughs> You get to the train. You were heading towards the train, weren't yes, you? Yes, yeah. I was getting, and I'm, I'm gonna get in, in the engine and start helping. Um, all right, all three of you are in the engine. All right, you shovel coal. You watch the plating. I'll watch the dial. All right, we got we got twelve now. We just got to get three more points up. Keep shoveling. Give me uh, a strength check. Is it five times? Yeah. Coal is going everywhere in the engine, in the air, or just all over the place as you're trying to trying to get coal going. What are you doing? Um, I'm still running to the train. Absolutely, you can get there. It's not difficult whatsoever. There's no one left to shoot do at. Do I you. hear or see anything other than? There's a low rumbling, people. and you do see Elmer busy trudging methodically towards the low sort of hill in the distance. I don't even know what she's doing but rumbling yes it sounds like distant thunder coming now it almost seems like it's coming from two halves thank you sound man it now sounds like it's coming from almost all around the uh, town my face goes grim and I'll try uh, try as fast as to the train as I can and tell people to that we might have to leave the train and hide somewhere else. Uh, Follett looks at you. Uh, oh, God. All right. We'll go all the way over to... Well, who's, I'll, I'll who's ask when I hear that, uh, that. Is there somewhere underground? As far as I know, the bisons don't dig. <laughs> They're not known. Do, do for, I for know them about the mine? Uh, I think you might have heard about it being mentioned once or twice. but um, I, There is a mine, but I don't know where. And you hear in the engine of the train, it's definitely building oh. up in steam, building up in power. I don't even know what to do. All right. Okay. You arrive at the, uh, the roadway that leads up towards the mine shaft. And you can see standing at the top of the road, there's a little kid, probably about six or seven years old. Okay. The kid is holding a knife. Uh, I keep walking towards the mine all right uh with a book in my hand sure it holds the knife out towards you i hold the book towards him oh it's trying to give you the knife ah okay then i take the knife all right the mine shaft itself you can see continues further on yes i enter the mine shaft all right you start walking in the mine shaft as you do, you're starting to see from side tunnels little faces of kids looking out at you. What happens to my sanity? You're going to continue deeper in? Yes. All right. You get to a point where the room opens up and in front of you is this very large statue of an individual that you immediately recognize as your nemesis. It is the great goddess Kali standing there in, well, completely in black, carved in black stone. Give me a final sanity check. <laughs> Fail, of course. You have how many left? Fourteen. Fourteen? Yes. Five are now gone. Any action you make from now on, you need to make a sanity check first to be actually be able to do anything. You're now so terrified of this statue because she stands about nine foot tall. You've got the book in one hand, you've got this knife in the other, and you have about 15 kids standing behind you. Because I have to do the sanity check in any case, I'll read the final chapter of the book. You just skip right through to the end? Yes. All right, you get to the end of the book. The end of the book is written in English. It is not written in the strange Hindi language. Uh, sanity check first? Uh, yes. Give me a sanity check. Let's see if you can get there. No. No. 
You look down at the page. You tear the page out. And you slowly start to eat it. Piece by piece by piece as you go completely mad. All right, back to uh, Josie. You no. are on the train? Yeah, uh, so I want to... Um, well, to close the doors of the luggage car sure. from inside with an... Mm, there's some there's some crates you can stack up against it. Yes, yeah, the boxes. Probably I push one of the boxes to the. It's door. really light. So, so the hard, mm, heavier one. Yeah, there are two that are quite heavy, but there's one that's very light now. So the one that is heavy. All right, absolutely. So you push that up against the door. Yeah. And then. And then check the lighter one. Well, you open it up. There's some bars of soap, and then there's clothes inside of it random there's male clothes and female clothes people's bags okay all right that's what you're doing yeah okay you're busy running through the snow with a suitcase it's slowing you down plus another suitcase on your back give me a con check yes Strong like Russia, you continue to run with suitcase on back and in hand. Yes, all right, you run. He uh, fires at you. I'm going to get me a deer, make my wife so proud. Or whatever the hell. It, they can't talk Russian, can they? I don't know. He shoots at you. Uh, this time it's a hit. Can I dodge? You can try, yes. Yes. You roll to the side, there's a shot. In sadness, you see as a piece of the suitcase gets hit by one of these bullets. But you continue on deeper and deeper into the forest. I will keep running and put like my hand on the <laughs> hole and keep just running, 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 <laughs> running, running, running. Not losing any of that money. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> All right, so you rush off into the forest. Uh, the two of you are sitting there, the gauge hits 15. Yeah, um... Um, when I see <laughs> the coal going everywhere, I say to Sam, maybe you shovel. And um, then I tell that what, what, what to do that we can get going. Uh, pull the brake, pull the brake. I pull that. Grab yeah. the double lever and you just pull it down. Yeah. There's a lurch. Who's on the train? You're on the train and you three are on the train. Yeah. The train starts to move forward. There's a choof, choof as it's starting to move forward. You can see bursting out of the tree line this herd of buffalo. Uh, there, is, there is something strange hanging on the front one. <laughs> and in horror, sanity checks. Uh, you're not looking out. You're busy looking at suitcases. Uh, is it under the sanity? Yeah. Then it's, oh, you uh, pass nicely. Your dice like Cthulhu. Yeah. Uh, you lose two sanity points. Not that it matters. No. <laughs> and uh, the train surges forward, leaving behind poor old uh, um, Elmer, who finishes eating chapter 12 and starts now. You, you, you have one last chance. <coughs> what do you... Oh, give him the mic. One last chance to do something. To do something meaningful. Well... You could either start eating chapter 11, or you could do something else. It's entirely up to you. Uh, what I do is I just walk outside towards the thundering noise. Ah, you now turn and start walking towards the thundering noise. Give me a sand check to see if that's what you do. <laughs> uh, of course not. No, chapter 11 is much more interesting as a uh, cuisine option. So you start to, to now consume chapter 11. And uh, that's where we're going to end today's stream. Thank you very much for playing, everyone, as the train sails off down the tracks, leaving a very determined thief <laughs> running through the great snowy forests of uh, the Midwest, carrying, uh, how much did you get? $50,000 with you uh, on your way out. The four of you, as cold as it is, are on this train, busy shunting down. I need all four of you to roll a d10. If any one of you rolls a 10, the engine explodes. Four. 
You are all lucky. You watch that plating. It gets hot. It holds. But yes, the last image you see is poor old Edith's corpse busy riding the front of this buffalo, <laughs> uh, this bison, as it rampages through the town, destroying whatever is left. And uh, yes, thank you all for playing. Um, it didn't take the course I thought it would, uh, <laughs> but they never do, do they? Um, so can I just ask the little backstories that were, you were given? Who was a thief? Who had stolen the hundred thousand dollars? You've just had your partner just screw you over. She's made off. Well, you two between the two of you, there's twenty five thousand dollars left on the train. So it is, it's the second prize but, type well, of thing. They don't know where it but they is. don't know where it is now because yeah. it was supposed to be in the crate, which I is mean, now full my of clothes. It was uh, one hundred thousand dollars in gold. In gold, yes, I know. I had to change it to to to, to pay. Worth of gold. Yeah. And I thought yeah. it yeah. would be too heavy to <laughs> to carry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you very and, much. For and joining when we get yes. to town, I'm going to arrest these two. <laughs> <laughs> if you had, I have a rifle. Yeah, they're yeah, both but, heavily but no, armed. No, but when we get to town, where right. there's actually where other, there's police other policemen persons, and things, yes. do they actually like get to I town? Like I did anything. Yeah. yeah let's see. Yet. Let's see. Well, that's my plan. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> that's your plan. All right. Well, thank you for having joining us. No money. You take it. Thanks everybody for playing. <laughs> And until next time, goodbye from Tampere Trekon 2018. I have 75 navigators.